It's thought of in the 1950s. It opened in 1969 and was designed by one of the um, Bauhaus uh, artists, one of the Bauhaus architects. And as I mentioned earlier, it has some fantastic outdoor monuments. So there is plenty to see and plenty to enjoy in this region. And there are lifts for those of you who don't particularly fancy taking this route to the top. But it's getting to the top on those skis. It just looks utterly, utterly beautiful out there today. And you can see that the first uphill is really, really um, a, a little one. So only 60 meters of uh, of the nivellation. So yeah, it's uh, quite important to make a good start in order not to lose too much time in the transition zone because it it could be quite packed. So you have to be at the front in order to be uh, ready to start the downhill. So skins coming off, ripped off and ready in this transition zone. Skins getting popped away in the bag. All kit has to be down, poles down on the ground. And I can tell that the first to arrive is not the first to leave on the descent. And when we get a chance to spot those numbers, we can tell you, but that's been a great transition for our new leader. And you can see already a, a fall in the downhill. So yeah, it's fresh snow. So the, it's quite complicated to be fast because you, you have to take the, the part which is uh, quite already uh, skid. And uh, if you're going outside of the, this track, you're going to lose time because it's a bit easier, but you're not that fast. So yeah. I think it's an interesting downhill and they're doing it, uh, it's always the same downhill, so they're passing it through two times, so the second time I think it would be easier for the athletes because they've already done it. And, yeah, the snow uh, yeah. will be slightly more impacted and, and perhaps yeah, also, yeah. a, a better line will be available, but we've really seen the pack split up and, and the difference between being a, a great descender and, and being a great climber, it, it, we've really been seeing that happening a lot here, especially on that corner just there on the rise. Yeah, there is a lot of falls. It's <laughs> quite interesting because I think the young are really going as fast as possible, but maybe they're losing a bit their, their skis and uh, they're falling. So it's really important to be fast, but you have also to be to stay on your skis and uh, also at the end of the downhill you don't have to be too much um, tired because yeah you're starting another uphill and it's yeah you have to to find this balance between going fast and also uh, keeping a bit of energy let's just double check that we have everybody no there are still a couple coming through as we get ready for the women to begin. Yeah, so it's and the U18 category now. Oh, sorry, U20 women category. Stefano Mottini, per favore, yeah, some, le, again, le some great talent coming Stefano through with the generation that will really be making this their own. And e alors, on a, les a smaller field. De, uh, this is often the way with the women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfor unfortunately, there is not that much women in the Eskimo, but at least the ones that are doing the, um, the international competitions are really strong. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting to see this race. And I think for today, Luis Tranca, who is uh, the, champion, the world champion last year, will be uh, the biggest favorite for the U20 women category. And here so we can with, see the, the transition. Men's and, yep, they are skinning back up to begin the second climb of this event. And we're looking up there at number 206 is uh, Arno Musa of Switzerland. He's just struggling to get his skins on as quick as he would have liked there. And with the French fresh snow, you have to be quite um, aware of not um, missing with your, your skins because some uh, fresh snow can go under the skin and make it not uh, sticky anymore. So you have to be really um, 
yeah, cautious of what you are doing into the transition zone. So, with these kind of conditions, I'm. It's cold, so that that's goes. It's got, the snow's not going to be so wet. What are the chances of it actually clogging up the the skins underneath? It's it's probably going to be dropping off quite nicely. It's not going to be like when it's on a warmer day where you start building up snow clogs underneath your skins. Yeah, because today the temperature is uh, the same for um, at the start of the uphill and at the summit, so there is no problem of humidity. And we can see that uh, athlete, uh, I can't <laughs> say who is it, but uh, just lost his ski in the downhill. So yeah, it was quite a catchy uh, first downhill for the U18 category. And uh, also it's important well to say that the, um, the this changing, jo changing zone is also the the technical zone, so if you have a technical problem like broken the ski or losing the pole or something like this, coaches are at the side of the track and they, they can give you a spare material. But uh, for the skis, it's on, it's the only only spot that you can change the ski. So if you have broken the skis like uh, 2000 meters up, you have to go down on one ski as we saw uh, with the Espanol, Sp Sp uh, Espanol athlete, sorry. So the start list for the women's under 20. And we've got 10 on that page there with Louise Trancas in the 101 bib. And that's just her in the, the blue centre of the screen behind the graphic at the moment. So much talent coming through. And at the bottom there, Lisa Kjelsed Andersen of Norway. The 14th. So 14 women will be competing in the under-20 category for this 2024 ISMF European Championships. And they'll have taken note of the climb from the start from the under 18 men, potentially. Uh, we could see during the first appeal of the U18 that uh, there were like five or at least four tracks available. So I think it's not a problem for the 14 to find a, a way not to broke a pole or something like this. We are, we're a few down. Um, there are 11 starters of the 14 that were on the start list. So um, as we mentioned, illness has done um, its bit and the under 20 women are underway beginning their climb a short climb to start with and we've seen already a tricky descent before they climb again and the clouds are building in the sky the blue sky has disappeared somewhat but conditions cool and i know a lot of the racers it's a little Tricky there, a little bit at the back there, just a ski court and slowing up the, the athlete right at the back. The cold conditions, though, I know a lot of the athletes prefer that to it being too warm. I was uh, reading about one of the senior women who said that the, the heat really doesn't satisfy her at all. And I think being out cold on the mountain is what they prefer. Yeah, and uh, minus seven is quite cold, but uh, when you're doing an effort, it's, I think, quite of the best temperature because you're not too cold, not too warm, and uh, you don't have to drink too lot or, yeah, to be too cautious of uh, not have to, not lose too much energy with the heat. So, yeah, I think today, beside the visibility in the downhill, I think it's uh, really good conditions, also with the fresh snow that's making uh, a good... Uh, a good track in the uphill, quite um, quite uh, sp speedy uphill, so yeah, very interesting today. And we can tell that the clouds are clouding because the uh, clouding over this, the light changing a little bit as we have a good close look at. That is the 102 from Spain, Lea Asuncion Jave, a 
sorry, she's from Andorra. Out the front at the moment. But there's plenty more metres to get through here. And as we've seen, the first descent can be a little testing. Yeah, for sure. And if, even if you are a favourite or really good in uphill, it's important to do a good downhill because, uh, as I said before, the, if you're falling, you can break uh, material and also uh, you can lose too much energy if you're skiing uh, with um, a level too high for you. So, yeah, it's really important. And it's, I think, one of the beauty of individual races. It's managing all the technical aspects like transitions as well as the downhills, uphills. It's a really, uh, I think, it's a really interesting race because you have all the aspects of Skimo in one single race. And for the U18 categories, for the men, we're just waiting yeah. for the first uh, split. Because I was I just think refreshing it's... my screen. <laughs> Great I minds think, think alike there, Leo. <laughs> I think it's up the first, uh, the second uphill for them, the, the longest one. So, yeah, just after the, the start of the second uphill, which is the longest, you have a foot part. So... Um, one more time, a technical part of Skimo. And uh, I think it's quite interesting because uh, starting the uphill with a close uh, foot part, it's quite challenging for the muscles and it's uh, really interesting for, um, for, the, ne for the following uh, uphill. Skimo really does challenge the body in so many different ways. So we're seeing the under 20 women head into the transition zone. Be poles down, skins off. And then let's see who can exit first. Maria Asuncion was first in, making sure she's putting her skins away neatly so that when she needs to, and she's first in and first out, she's made the transition into the descent first. I think the second is uh, Louise Tranca and the third is uh, Margot um, Mendes de Leon, sorry. And uh, yeah, we can see that uh, already four women are, are making the, the start and they are quite uh, making a gap with the others. Uh, these two in front looking very confident on the descent. Margo Mendes de Leon of Switzerland there in third. Perhaps taking a slightly more cautious approach, having seen so many falls in the under 18s, men who were first onto the slope. But Margot is doing quite a good uh, downhill, I think. She's making uh, She's huge turns, but it's quick and uh, you save a lot of energy doing that. So, yeah. And in front, uh, the two women are also skiing really well. It's good to see that even the younger uh, have already a good uh, skiing level. So, yeah. They disappear below the cloud line. We'll take a look back at the transition zone. And, and you can Actually, see gonna... all the spare material at the side of the track, like poles, skis if there is uh, something broken. Vitally and something, important. Yeah, and something that is quite uh, special in this uh, track is that the, the, the lower altitude is not at the start, but it's at the... Um, yeah, the start is quite at the top of the track, so it's quite interesting because uh, of the altitude. They are not going too high. Like uh, two years ago during the World Cup, it was going up the hill and uh, yeah. it was really, really challenging at the end because the altitude was quite, quite high. And I think today, uh, altitude won't make uh, a huge difference between the athletes. Yeah, punishing <laughs> in a, the world's most punishing sport. It seems a bit cruel to stick extra altitude into those meters as well. And I think we've got um, just sight of our first two in the women's under 20 coming down and that does look to me 
but it is still Leia Ancien avec Van Dor in front. It is. And then we have Luis Tronquez, Trancas of France. It's a fraction behind. So this is where the transition is. de Leon comes third. It's just watching how Leia is uh, making sure her skins are properly attached. She took some time. She was very careful about how she put her skins away. And that's where you save seconds at this point. And not quite to her liking. And we can see so, that the women that were in front on. during the first uh, World Cup Holt are up. also in front today. So, yeah. She is underway. Pension. Getting a clearer picture now of how this race is shaping up for the women's under 20s. 11 athletes as Berta Guitar Barrel of Spain starts to fight with her skins to get them into position. That's her in the red on the right. It's fantastic to watch the different techniques from our athletes as we head back to the start line for the women's under 18s. Yep. With uh, Laia Celes Sanchez, who is the biggest favorite, I think, because she was second last year during the World Championships and uh, she also won the individual during the European Youth Olympic. Uh, festival last year, so she also um, was second this year during the first World Cup of the individual race for the Youth World Cup. So she will be the, the girl to beat today, I think. With Bib 202, we have Martina Scola. With the Bib 203, we've got Lynn Pollinger. 204, Elenea Beatrice Bobot. And uh, 2000. Five, uh, Vanessa Marca. She's over on the right, and the starter starter banner discarded to the left there. It failed, sitting on the naughty step. And we got 11 women ready to go in the under 18s class. And just a slight slip on the start there. But it lies over on the right, which is where we saw Laia Celes Sanchez starting in the red. And yeah, this should be this should be a great race from uh, I know you've been putting in a lot of hard work having a look at how this is going to shape up Leo. And it's not so long ago that we've seen these guys in competition. Um, December, they were, they were already showing what great form they're in in the early part of the season. Yeah, and un unlikely the senior categories, the, the youth categories of uh, World Cup circuit already had the uh, individual race because the senior just had a sprint and relay. So it's easier, I think, to to see who will be uh, quite at the front uh, with the young Look at this. athletes. And uh, Fantastic start from, different uh, technique. Yeah, massively sorry, different really, technique we're seeing here, aren't we, Leo? It's just the uh, almost like a little sprinting run up the hill to try and get clear of the others who are marching and now realizing that they need to try and close the gap. And it's great with these drone shots to be able to see the different way you can <laughs> ski uphill and how confident you're feeling to go for that very energetic start but just being closed up a little bit now we do have three clear of the pack as they head yeah, up. a really strong start from the first but sorry i can't see who it is i'm quite sure it's not um Laia Celeste Sanchez, because I think she's nope. third. But, uh, and she's yeah. wearing red, yeah. Maybe it's uh, Martina Scola, the Italian with the blue suit. I'm not sure, but 
Yeah, really strong, strong start for, for her. We'll get to see when they move into the transition zone with a bit of luck. And it is, it is just fascinating to see the mindset as well for these athletes when they know that they can go out and push quite hard. And sorry for the U18 category men because we don't have any splits time, so it's quite complicated to see the, the race. But I think uh, we will see them at the top of the second up here. We will enjoy some beautiful pictures with us. So that was for the slight false start, I think. That was the Swedish athlete. She just. So you're seeing. Yeah. Yeah, she just, she just went a little bit soon, didn't she, on the start? I think yeah, that and uh, if you add the back, it's quite a long race because you don't see anybody. But uh, yeah, really, uh, it's good to see her in the European Championships, also from Sweden, because there isn't a, a lot of Swedish girls. So yeah, it's good for experience. And also, uh, I, I'm sure she's doing a great perf performance also. This is going to be... Maybe, uh, uh, ah, she lost oh. the skins, I think. I think this is going to be a real mental test for her at this point. And it's a fantastic example of quite how brutally difficult this sport is, as there is very little traction on one of those skis. Yeah, I think it's just um, her skins that are not that good because they are not that good because uh, if she had lost one, she would have already changed it. But yeah, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So it's not easy today, but I think it will really make her stronger for the next races and next years. It is absolutely brutal, this as well. And, and I do love the fact that most of the uh, athletes, and Sarah Dreyer, who will be competing in the Austrian in the uh, senior race, says uh, that she loves the fact that this sport pushes you beyond your limits and proves to yourself, proves to you that you can go beyond your limits and achieve, even if you have to go a slightly circuitous route. There's a bit of traversing going there to try and make those skins work as we switch over and I think this looks and I think like it's the U18 uh, it's really hard to say because I think it's quite <laughs> a mix between the the two categories but I think there is already the U18 that are making their way to the last uphill that is it's tricky to see uh, oh here we got some split times for the uh, under 20 women and it is and Dora's Lea Ancien, who is in front with uh, Louise Trancas right behind her. Very little in it. So 12 seconds further back still, Margot Mendes de Leon. And those are the top three. They are 12 seconds clear of Clitia Valle of Italy. And Ida Valdal of Norway is in fifth place at the moment. Quite separated, so the... that field. And it is Ava, uh, Alva Carlsson, who's that Swedish athlete, struggling. that We've seen battling to get up there, but she has completed the first split. So she's still competing, which is a massive part of this race. Yeah, no, but so no to splits come yet here, for the you have to be... You have to be um, to have the selection from the from your nation. So yeah, it's already uh, a good thing to be here because some uh, athletes had to stay at home because uh, they weren't selection selection. So yeah, I think uh, nice race. And also uh, for the U18 men, they are going to arrive at the transition zone and going down to to make their last uphill. And uh, it's quite also interesting because usually the last uphill at the end of the race is like, uh, yeah, I don't know, 20 meters high because it's just to put the skins and uh, go up running. 
but this time it's 350 meters of the nivellation so it's also quite uh, important to save some energy for the last uphill unlikely the other tracks who are just ending with 20 meters of the nivellations great camera pictures here from our camera team on the mountains i can almost feel that snow crunching beneath his skis or her skis our camera operator trying to get into the best possible position to show us but the cloud has come down somewhat on the mountain that's restricting the view and it is also making things a little dark for us to actually tell the difference but yes that is the red uh, and this is suit Laya so i think Celeste this is Sanchez. the under 18s yep yeah it's the u18 category it is, it is. And she is clear by the look of it. Just uh, having to lean on the skis to try and get her skins in place. And they're going deep down into that powder. But she's and two Spanish girls at the front with uh, Erola Rosias Sacrest, I think. They're doing really yep. a good race today. And this is the we're... second uphill of the U18 category with the men. It's really it just hard looks to see epic the with the, the cloud. Yeah. Cloud and the overhang of the cliff. And a yeah. slight slip there. Just giving a fraction of a second to those chasing behind him as they kick the turn. And try and not to go back Italians and take... at the front. <laughs> So slippery conditions out there. Third is a Swiss guy, but it's really hard to say uh, who it is. I think it's Malik Uldry. And there is quite a gap. And you see here the categories mixing up, I think. Oh, no. No, it's a group of uh, UI team. With an Italian, a Spaniard, a Swiss, a uh, Norwegian, and a uh, um, German. They're doing the battle for the fourth place. It is definitely changing conditions as we go along. We're talking about the light and the low cloud as well, but. The, uh, the packing of the snow seems to be, um, yeah, well, it, it's just, well, it's beautiful out there. And watching these guys come up and then on that side, we can spot the descent as well. Too quick to spot his number on his back. Perhaps and Enrico it was the Pellegrini. first uh, U18 category. Yeah, I think it was uh, Enrico, yeah. And just following him is, uh, I think, uh, Luca Curioni. So two Italians and out in front, potentially there. And Malik there Uldry in uh, third. So, yeah, they're quite... Uh, it will be interesting during the last uphill to see uh, who will be uh, the first to come up to the finish line because they are quite closed. But I think uh, at uh, for the fourth place, you see there is quite a, a huge gap. So if they are not doing any mistakes, they're going to battle for the podium. And that could be quite some Donc, moi, finish. There we go. Uh, we have... we... I think that was someone skiing for fun. Ah, oh, here we go. And this is Alva. I think that was Alva Carlsson of Sweden. continuing as well you know she's obviously had a struggle at the start of the race but is still competing as we go back to a rapid descent from the under 18 men and they've got some work to do to catch up with our front three and we can see that the visibility Kriani during the Andrew. downhill is coming worse and worse i think from the the middle of the downhill so the, for the next athletes, I think it's really important to choose uh, good ski goggles because uh, it will be more helpful in the downhill to to see the better way the, the, the track. 
and this is still so Leo, ch changing light what's what what is the best because we have different color goggles for different visions and obviously you don't want to be miss seeing those um moguls and loose snow patches if you you know the flat light can be very tricky to see actually what's ahead what what is the best kind of goggle for these kind of conditions uh, i think it's the yellow or the orange uh, lens it will make uh, the visibility better but uh, yeah it will help a bit but at the end uh, sometimes you even with these key goggles you don't see uh, really good and it's uh, yeah it's more challenging for the athletes and uh, i hope they'll see all the downhill because sometimes you can get lost in the downhill but today i think it's uh, it's fine because the the frog isn't too, too tight that's first out is Luca the... Curioni. That's Luca yeah, Curioni the... first out. And Rico Pellegrini is looking to be off him. He's just got to make sure that he's got his skins packed away. Uh, his uh, skins on properly, by the way. But this is where Malik Uldri is desperately trying to come out of the transition quicker. He's going to be behind Pellegrini. But I think he may have closed up a little of that time. Uh, not yet. I'm sorry, I, I've done a mistake, zone. but it's not it's not uh, Malik Uldri. Malik Uldri is just coming into the transition zone ah, it's now. Musa. The the Swiss Arno who Musa. is third is uh, Arno Moser. Yeah, sorry. And he's, he's quite having a, a problem with his skis. Yeah, something's not not playing ball for him. And the split time and on the screen is not comes right. in. We have the, the two Italian guys at the front, so uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, um, Arnaud Moser has quite a problem with his biding. It's quite a pity because he was uh, really close to the, the two first Italians and uh, now he has to, to really be fast in the last uh, uphill to, in order to be able to climb on the podium. And yeah, just coming into the transition really zone is Theo Vuta. Yeah, so we can Just see that uh, uh, with uh, one downhill and one transition, we can see that uh, the podium for the third place is quite uh, yeah, changing because now there are four athletes that can make it to the podium. So, yeah, as I That's said, it's really technical. In the under and the German had the problem. He just fall in the, in the net. It's a pity. <laughs> That is unfortunate. So, just a little bit of a breeze now, but not windy by any stretch of the imagination. That's going to help. As we wait to see who else is coming in in the under-18 men. So on the track at the moment, we have the under-20 women, the under-18 women, and we have the under 18 men and we have timings but they are missing our italians who are out in front in the under 18 men's so I'll just stick a pin in that for the moment as we see that is isak dripping of norway in the white And you can see that uh, at, after this transition, they're turning around the transition zone in order to catch the last uphill because uh, they're not uh, going to make the two times the, the second down, uh, uphill, sorry. So yeah, the, the athletes are going around the transition zone in order to climb the last uphill. And for the next category, it will be uh, two, two uphills um, Two long uphills and then the last uphill. So one uphill more for the other categories. And for those of you who are perhaps watching Schemo for the first time, um, it's important to note that when you come into a transition zone, you've got to put your poles down before you can start either skinning up or taking your skins off. Everything needs to get packed away before you pick up your poles. Penalties can be awarded if you don't do what you're supposed to do. It's all for safety reasons. 
We don't want any other athletes tripping over any kind of equipment that's been left lying. If anything is dropped, it has to be picked up. And all of this has to be done in the fastest possible time. And uh, this, um, this thing with the poles is done for uh, security, as you said. And uh, now it's, we, it's not a huge problem because there is not a lot of athletes on the track. But when the, the senior men will start, you will see it will be really <laughs> packed in the transition zone. And uh, yeah, sometimes you just uh, can't find your poles anymore. It's quite uh, strange sometimes. So yeah, ISMF is doing some, um, some um, regulation to, to avoid some, uh, some problems and uh, security issues. Yeah, safety first on the mountain. Sahari Dobre Tudor of Romania there on the left in the teal and pink. He is skinned up and ready to go. And I think that is Malta Lessing of Sweden. 223. Oh, no, that is not. I can't see that number very clearly. I think that is Malting has just turned up now. Who is the problem for the video? Malta. Sorry, what? Who is the problem no, for the Max video? Max Osterberg. No one. No one, because George did tell me that someone is in the middle of the camera. Oh, but I was not aware. Let me check. I look forward to much bigger numbers as I get older and my eyesight gets worse. <laughs> so we've got the under 18 men, the under 18 here, women, no the uh, under 20 uh, women, and the rest of the race is ready to come. We've got seniors and under 23s starting together. And so there's plenty of action all over the mountain as the weather's closing in a little bit more. This is where the director of our programme was hoping to show you beautiful shots across the mountain of blue skies, the fantastic peaks that ski mountaineers like to go and enjoy on their own. But sometimes the weather lets us down. As we have another Norwegian coming in. And normally we will see the, the arrival of the first uh, U18 category with the two Italians that were in front. So if you have been uh, checking the timings, you may see on the under-18 men's race that Anna Musa of Switzerland is in the lead, but we believe that the uh, two Italians are actually in front of him. Luca Curioni leading Enrico Pellegrini coming out of this transition zone. Right, we'll just keep an eye on that. It could be just a glitch with their transponders, their uh, trackers. Um, but they are not showing anywhere else on the scoreboard and we have seen them on the surface. So there we go. That's Malta Lessing of Sweden, 223 on the left. As we see another Romanian come in. Christian Proden. Some beautiful mountains in Romania. Transylvania, absolutely stunning. And he's joined by Adria Isol Garcia of Andorra. Let's just have a little refresh of our screens in the women's under 18 after the first split. Laia Sele Sanchez was leading substantially 29 seconds ahead of fellow Spaniard Anya Gareta Faris. And she, in turn, is 20 seconds ahead of Martina Scola of Italy, according to our timing screen. So those are the top three in the women's 
under 18, or they're saying that, uh, Erola uh, we... Rojas Sacrest is in danger of making it a Spanish 1-2-3 because she's just over a second behind Martina Scholar, who is currently in third. So that could be a great battle for the final place on the podium. And could we see a clean sweep for the Spanish in the women's under 18 categories? In the men's under 18, as you mentioned, uh, we are missing the timings for our two Italians, uh, Luca Curione ahead of Enrico Pellegrini, then Arno Musa of Switzerland in third place. And he is 22 seconds up on Julia Pujol Paramon of Spain. And in the women's under 20s, we've got split times for that first split. Lea Ancion Avet was in front. And we're back on. And this is Luca Corioni, who I think is the first uh, U18. He's going up to uh, in the last uphill, up to the finish. Nice race for well, him. He is certainly on his own, isn't he? Yeah, I think he has done a really great start of the last uphill and now he's just trying to make it to the finish. And as I said, it's 300, uh, yeah, 350 meters, so it's quite long and you have to be uh, quite uh, managing your energy all, uh, all the uphill. So I think he's doing quite well. And maybe we can see uh, after that the second one, which is uh, Enrico Pellegrini. Another Italian, so Italians in the U18 categories are doing really great today. Looking very strong and confident on this final push. Striding uphill. Flying the flag for Italy. And the track is, uh, is looking good with uh, strong, quite uh, strong snow. And uh, yeah, I think today good conditions for the athletes. And for those of you sitting in the office, watching these pictures, pretending to do work, just absorb our cameraman's, our camera operator's efforts to bring you as close to the action as possible. And just dream of that time in the mountains you've got coming up potentially however far away it is fantastic conditions this is Flen in the Grand Massif of France the first of four races this week in the ISMF 2024 European Championships we have the vertical and the races to come and on Friday we'll be back to bring you the mixed relay a night race from Chamonix a lot of interest in the mixed relay, a very exciting race as well. One of those that will be included in the Olympics in 2026 at Milano Cortina. And we mentioned that uh, there is illness rampaging its way through uh, some of the teams. Uh, Emily Arup, who will not be competing in the senior women's race today is hoping to be able to compete on Friday in that mixed team relay with Thibaut Anselmeck. They are a very strong team. And there's a European title at stake. Interesting as well that within a country, Leo, it's um, you're part of a national team, but when it comes to being represented in these relays, there's, there's so few places available yeah, and uh, for the Olympics, it's um, one team per nation. So, yeah, for the next uh, three years, this season included, uh, it will be quite a fight within the the great uh, nations of Skimo with uh, like France, Italy, Switzerland, uh, Austria, Germany, and so on. Sp Spain also, and it will be a, a great fight between the athletes in order to get the selection for the 2026 uh, Olympic Games. Not so very far away now. The last Olympic Games in Beijing in 2022. Very different, held in COVID quarantine conditions. 
didn't get to do much sightseeing in Beijing. Just a trip on the bus from the hotel to the venues and back. It would be very different in Italy. And here's an Italian who would be very much keen on representing his country. That's Enrico Pellegrini, 202. And we can see the, his teammate him. just in front. Yeah, I think it's quite... Uh, at the end, it will be quite... Um, not uh, huge gaps between the athletes. And I think this last uh, uphill made it... Uh, yeah, made the athlete come closer. So it will be quite uh, packed at the end. And when you're looking back, it's never a good, uh, a good sign because <laughs> sometimes you just, uh, <laughs> yeah, full gas and you can't go uh, quicker anymore. And uh, but I think, yeah, I think the gap is is sufficient in order to finish second for Enrico. You make the turn and uh, you can have a sneaky peek back down the mountain. Not quite white out conditions because there isn't any wind, but it is. Very, very white up there. Low cloud as they head under the gondolas. And they've been on the track for more than 48 minutes now. His legs will be getting a little bit tired by now. But the end, I would say, is in sight. The end cannot be far away, I think is perhaps a better way to say that. And uh, we really don't know who is in uh, third position for the this podium of the U18 category. Maybe now we can see. Ah, and it's uh, a ah. Swiss guy. I so think it it's uh, Arno Arnaud Moser Moser. that could. Yeah, I think he could make uh, his way up to the podium because he had uh, quite a terrible transition, but uh, he's really strong. And uh, yeah, we can see that he's doing great now. And uh, I think he's going to make it to the podium because behind we can't see anybody. Actually, now. I think that might be. Is that Theo Wouters? Is it 205 I saw on the back there? No, no, it's Arno Moser. No, Arno Moser. For sure no, because... no, 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 it's yeah. Arno Moser, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as we said, um, the, for the first World Cup, so Enrico Pellegrini was second, uh, Luca Curioni was third, and uh, Arno Moser was sixth. So yeah, he's doing better uh, now, and I think his shape just grew up uh, during the Christmas break, and it's uh, good for him. Unfortunately, uh, Malik Uldry was uh, winning the first World Cup, but now I think he's battling for the fourth and fifth place. This is great. This is a lovely close competition we're seeing. We'll try and get a look at the numbers of these athletes coming up here and that looks like one of the Andorans but no it is one no, of the French, French athletes just just in front of uh, Malik Uldry and uh, maybe it's uh, Gustave Blanc who is doing really a great race because uh, he was 10th during yep. the first uh, World Cup so he's making uh, up a lot of spots and now a Norwegian so is that dropping uh, I, I, I think it's Rodal uh, Augen Aaron. Okay. I'm not sure because yeah. yeah it's quite complicated because uh, the 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 bib are pinned in the the race suit and sometimes the some pins are going away so yeah. Huh. Yeah, sorry for that. We <laughs> it's not easy to see the bibs, <laughs> but uh, Spaniard making his way up to the top six, I think. Interesting things happening in the women's under 20 as well. We'll get to that shortly, but let's stay focused on this men's under 18 race as they and push for the this top. This is uh, Maurice Barger, who is a German racer. And this is a uh, Julian Tritscher, who is a uh, Austrian guy. Yeah, it's very really interesting for the um, the athletes, but also for us because it's quite closed and it's making the the race more exciting. And this is uh, Julia Pujol Paramon, 
with the 2008. And here we can see the finish line. And the uh, athletes are going to be really tired, so they're going to fall on the ground, I think. <laughs> but they have to go up to the second line in order to let the other be able to finish Cl Clear also. some space. <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, it's going to be quite uh, similar as yesterday during the Alpe Chermis in uh, cross-country skiing. Yeah. Well, it looks like a walk in the park for this man. Yeah, really easy for this him. This is uh, Luca Curioni, has a little bit of a sprint just to make sure. He's going to finish in style. He's coming up towards us now. And that is yeah, Luca to him. Curioni of Italy. He has really nice race. absolutely slayed it, as they would say. A little bit of a celebration. He's over the first, over the second. And now... He can yeah, you see. collapse. <laughs> but really nice uh, last appeal for him. 52 minutes, 40, 52 minutes, 42.16 seconds of climbing, rapid descent, staying upright on the descent and victory in the under 18s for Luca Curioni. And he's followed home by his teammate Enrico Pellegrini yeah, it's a, a feeling that is incredible because uh, finishing with your teammates on the podium is really something uh, quite... Uh, yeah, I, I could experiment it uh, in 2018 in the U18 category as well, where we were three uh, Swiss athletes on the podium. It was really, really a, a great day. And uh, yeah, you're doing a, a podium, but if there is a teammate on it, it's even better. Great recovery rate there, I think. Being first over the line definitely helps you recover quicker. And third, Arnaud Moser, oh, that... who has done a really great race uh, because he, he was very strong, but uh, he made a terrible transition at the end of the last downhill, but now he's coming back to third. So, uh, yeah, congrats to him also because he never, he never uh, gave up. A minute 17.3 seconds behind the winner. But bronze medal position for Moussa of Italy. And Gustave Blanc of France comes clear in fourth, shaking his head. And, and Malik Uldri in uh, fifth. I think he's not that happy, but uh, you know, a top five in the European Championships is really great and uh, yeah they're all going to be strong in the senior category so they have to continue the work and uh, trying to perform as well as uh, they could. It was Royal Haugen who came in in sixth place for Norway with Gonzalo Casares Hervas of Spain in seventh. He's got his... He's, it's the breathing. It's the, the fighting for air to get back into your lungs after that final ascent. Post-race, yeah. Leo. Leo. What, what happens now? I mean, other sports, we see people taking ice baths. Is it just a roll in the snow? <laughs> no, I think they're going to change the, um, the suit, like uh, taking uh, new uh, clothes in order not to get too cold. And then they're going to walk a bit in order to evacuate the, the, um, yeah, the, the effort in the legs in order to be able to start uh, on um, the next race, with the, which is the vertical race. And uh, yeah, just a, a little walk, really uh, slowly, and then going back to the hotels, uh, eating and uh, also uh, sleeping, because the, the two important aspects of um, recovering is really uh, well, uh, eating well and also sleeping well. So yeah, maybe ice bath or things like that, but uh, it's not the important part of the recovery. Get that lactic acid out of the body, but it just is, these pictures tell it all, 
the first three athletes, the victory and guaranteeing a place on the podium makes it so much easier to stand up and smile and wave to the crowd. But of course, finishing further down the field means you've spent longer on the mountain as well. And those legs are going to be even more tired. His lungs burning just a little bit more. But a great race in the under 18s. Yeah, Some really nice race. Some rivalries that are going to be set up for future. Yeah, for sure. And um, also, uh, it was really a quite a catchy um, first downhill. We saw a lot of falls, but now, uh, yeah, they have a really great level. And here you can see that the, the skis are um, on the, um, the, the balance in order to, to see the, the weight of the skis because there is a reglementation about the, 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 the weight of the skis and they have to be less than uh, 850 grams, I think, something like this. And if uh, they are too light, you are, gi you are yeah. given a penalty. And so all those the, times we have there are provisional and we will confirm the final standings. As uh, No mentioned there, still a potential for penalties to be awarded. So those are the under 18's provisional standings. We'll have them confirmed. And now we are ready. So this is the U20 the men. men category at the start with uh, Jules Rebo, who is, I think, one of the favorite because he, he was winning the first World Cup. Herman de Bertolis also was second and uh, Simone Campagnoni was third. So yeah, up to the, there is the top 10 of the last World Cup who is present on the start line. So it will be really close and really interesting to see also with the downhills who are more technical than I thought and uh, it will yeah, add up a bit of uh, suspense and also um, there is one uphill more for these athletes because they are two years uh, more um, yeah sorry I can't find my words <laughs> but they are um, U20 so they are <laughs> more experienced more experience. yeah and so uh, they have one uphill more so a bit uh, longer race and their race will be the same length as the senior so at the end uh, they will be able to compare their time with the senior category and as with all performance athletes we see it in tennis we see it in cycling we see it in in every performance athlete um a growth spurt around about the age of 18 to 20 21 that's where the, the muscular in in the male body particularly really changes as well so definitely not the finished article these these under 20 men but getting close to the athletes that they will be in years to come as they get underway in the 2024 ismf european championships under 20 men's race and we've seen a pretty clear start there, no skis lost at, as I yet, no so. broken poles as far as we can see. So clean away and the sky's looking a little bit clearer over Flan. A little bit more light higher up the mountain. You can see the cloud sitting in the valley there, just swamping the gondolas on the right as they disappear down the mountain, bringing the downhill tourists up the mountain, perhaps bringing up some of the fans of Schemo to watch further up the mountain. And I think they're way off on the groomed and pisted slopes. Got access to 270 kilometers of groomed slopes from Flon in the Grand Massif. But we're focusing on what's happening with our uphillers and, and a really right strong at the start, start from Herman, uh, Herman de Bertolis. De yeah. Really trying to, to making a good start. Yeah, really impressive. But it's quite a tactic because as the first camera. uphill the first uphill is quite um, short, so if you're starting uh, strong you can uh, all the the rhythm up to the the end of the uphill, and then you you have quite a, 
a gap made with your adversaries. So yeah, it's tactical, and uh, but you have to be able able, able to do it because uh, yeah, you have to be really strong in order to put a gap in the first uphill at the start. So they are on the way. At the start of uh, a good, just under an hour on the mountain. As we see it snake up the mountain and we'll come further over to the right here before beginning the descent. Transition zone waiting for them up the top there. And we have seen that descent prove a little tricky for the under 18 men earlier. Just a quick word on the under 20 women who have gone through the two splits and the early leader, Lea Ancien Ave of uh, Andorra of 102 has dropped back to third now. Louise Trincaz moving out in front for France, but only five seconds ahead at that second split of Ida Valdal of Norway. So looks like it's going to be a good battle between those two. Yeah, and behind there is, uh, as you said, uh, Lea Ancionavet and um, two other athletes with uh, Margot Mendes de Leon and Silesia Vallet, who are uh, just into uh, one minute. So, yeah, it will be really close for the, the third uh, spot on the podium. And quick recap as well of the under 18 women's race the leader there Laia Sanchez Celes Sanchez well she is well clear at the moment of teammate Aina Gareta Faris and Martina Scola of Italy is third with her teammate Melissa Bertoloni just behind her in fact there's three Italians in the top five top two positions held by Spain so again, that's shaping up for an interesting finish as well. The men's under 20 has been complete. Sorry, the men's under 18 has been completed. That's been won by Luca Curioni. And time to regather at the end of the race for the men's under 18. So we wait for our next two, finishes with two Norwegians and one Swedish so it's really interesting to see the the people from the north starting to building up a, quite a, a good team for the future and uh, yeah it's really interesting to see that uh, not only Italy France Spain and so on uh, have some people behind for the next generation but also uh, other countries that are not um, too, ma too, too numerous now, but uh, yeah, they're building a great team for the future. It does say an awful lot when you see top level athletes prone on the snow. They've given everything, no podium, no medal, but finishing this event at the European Championships. recognition that you've been through it together as well. Okay, sprint finish from the Romanian. And I think we're waiting for the, um, the U20 women as well as the U18 exactly women. Yeah. And also uh, we, we're waiting also for the first uh, transition at the end of the first downhill for the U20 men, which is uh, going to ah, uh, so there we go. No, ask him, ye shall receive, Leo. That was nicely yeah. done. Can you do the lottery numbers for me next? So yes, this is the can... <laughs> this is the transition. And you can see that there is a lot of people into the transition zone because there are more at the start, and uh, yeah, with the senior, it will be even more packed. 
I'm trying to see the split. Glance to the left, a glance to the right to see what everybody else is up to, so they can keep up with. And that was uh, uh, Max Palmiatvila. I'm so sorry about the pronunciation of your name, Max. Um, in the blue from Andorra, was heading off after Matthew Ferris of Switzerland. 112 there is Miguel Naudi Rubio of Andorra. And we've got some of the, the women in here as well, because I think 210 is Clara Velopec of the under 18s. She's just over on the left there, in with the pink skins. And you can see that and she's struggling because the, her skin isn't uh, sticking to her ski anymore, so she has to take another one. And here is the, the race of the day because it's the most open race since 2018. As I said, it's the senior women category with the lack of um, the absence of Axel Gachemolare and also um, Emily Harrop as well as um, Julia Murada. So this is... So we see yeah, the they are on but the yeah, starting we do need to clarify, they will not be starting. <laughs> Yeah. In bib one or bib four, they will not be racing today because they're ill. But uh, yeah, Alba Di Silvestro, the great talent she is as well. Celia Perat Pessi of France. We've got Johanna Heimer of Austria. Again, another fantastic. And Alexandra Schmidt. All of these have um, been showing what talent they've got. Margot Ravenel is one of the up and coming ski mountaineers from France. And also we have to be aware. Well, the under yeah. And we have also be uh, we have to be aware of uh, Tove Alessanderson, who is starting uh, quite at the end of the grid, but she's really strong and uh, she was um, she has won 15 gold medals in the orienteering running <laughs> championships, and uh, also she was uh, really strong. She was uh, a good. Uh, a good uh, ad adversary of Axel Gachemolare two seasons ago. She also won the Pyramenta with Axel, so yeah, we have to be aware also of Tove, even if she's not starting at the front of the, the pack. I got a little bit dazzled when I checked her palmares or her, her statistics yeah. on the website because there was so much gold on there that it, it dazzled me. She is a, a fantastic talent, a great all round sporter. I mean, sky runner, trail runner. It's, uh, it's astonishing quite how much some individuals can achieve. And I think I saw um, an athlete that was coming up to the line. I don't know if he, it was the first uh, U18 or U20, but uh, yeah, maybe we will have the classification uh, as soon as possible. We will. We will shoot back to that with you. We'll just get the, the senior women underway. They are heading for the rebuilt arch. She's standing proud now on the snow of Flen. In the 2024 women's senior race, individual race, at the European Championships. And they look to be cleanly away. And as you said, there is the U23 categories, who is, um, which is uh, a category of uh, U23 athletes. They are doing the race uh, with the same start and the same um, track as the senior women, but there is an annex classification for, for them. So it's a race within a race, I would say. It's good to see as well, because I think there's going to be a little bit of chomping at the bit. Youth over experience. We'll not really see that this afternoon. You can see how that track has really flattened out now with the four races that have started previously to this, the men's and women's under 20s and the men's and women's under 18s out on the track. And that has been and flattened out the surface and made it a much clearer pathway for the senior women in the under 23s who are on their way up the hill as we keep an eye 
I'm hearing that there is uh, results for the younger categories, but uh, unfortunately we don't have the split times, but uh, in short time we'll be able to tell you what, uh, what is the result of the U18 women, U20 women as well, uh, and the U18 men have already finished the race. Sorry. There's a lot happening in Flen today. And we know in the under-18 men's, Luca Curioni of Italy, provisional winner. We'll get the confirmation of that ahead of Enrico Pellegrini and Ono Musa of Switzerland. Taking third place on the podium, Gustave Blanc in fourth. And Malik Ulri, Ulri making the top five. And for the U20 women, we have the first two athletes that uh, came to the line. So it is Hilda Waldal, the Norwegian, who has finished in front of Luis Tranca, with uh, Tranca wow. has, has lost one minute during the, the last uphill. So a really impressive race from uh, Ida Waldal because she was just behind, five seconds behind uh, Luis at the last uh, split time. So a really impressive race for her. We've seen, uh, I think, one of these athletes who gets stronger as the race goes on with Ida Wald because she was 35 seconds down on Trinkaz after the first split as well. So she has built her speed across the race and come home with a time of one hour, 18.89 seconds, just outside the hour time for Ida Valdal in the provisional finish times we've got. So just two finishers so far in the women's under 20s. Louise Trinkaz in second for France. She was ahead at that second split time. Potentially Valdal tracking her and finding her path as we watch the senior women and the under 23s go through that transition and onto the first of the downhills. I think this it was Anna Alonso, a bit. Ala, Anna Alonso, the Spaniard, who was in first position during this downhill. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, it seems that it was a Spaniard racing suit. Brightening up, the snow, different shades of white now and blue. No wind, temperatures around minus five, minus six on the mountain. Pretty perfect conditions for ski mountaineering. And still nobody behind uh, the two, Hilda Waldal and Luis Tranca at the, at the end of the race. But uh, at the last split time, the, the second group was uh, nearly two minutes behind, so I think uh, we will be, in short time, able to, to tell the third. Well, that is a great performance from the Norwegian. She was a world champion last year in the U18 category. So, yeah, congrats to her because she's keeping the, the title. And uh, unfortunately for Louise, but she was already second last year and second today, but uh, also a really strong race for her. Norway, traditionally, one might say, win more medals at the Olympics than anybody else, the Winter, Olymp the games, the Winter Olympic Games, should I say. And they're very strong in the Alpine events, but not the huge numbers moving over to Schemo yet one might say. So many French competitors and Austrians and Italians very keen on Schemo. And relatively few Swedes and Norwegians, I would say. I think I'm out of order to say that as we keep an eye on this Spaniard having a great descent here. Yeah, I'm sure it's Anna Alonso, yeah. Really strong athlete. She was, uh, I will see my notes, sorry. <laughs> 
she was uh, fifth last year in the overall World Cup, and uh, she had made two podiums in the World Cup. So yeah, she's quite a, a good racer in individual. Also, it Alba is. de Silvestro, Caroline Ulrich in third, which is the first U23 uh, oh. athlete coming to the zone. Katia Mascherona and Lisa Moreschini following uh, Caroline Ulrich are also U23 categories. Alonso on the way and quickly followed as well by, I think that was, was that Peria Pesse who was hot on her heels? No, uh, she's uh, going out now with uh, Lisa Moreschini. A blue, a blue suited uh, shadow following her straight out there, but this is much more tightly packed at the moment in this senior and under 23 women's race. And now we have the podium and even the top five for the U20 women with first place Ida Waldal, second place Louise Tranca, third place is the Andorran Lea Ancion Havet, fourth is uh, the Italian Clizia Valet. And fifth is Margot Mendes de Leon. And in sixth place, also, we have uh, Eva Mateyov Dichova. Sorry for the pronunciation. But uh, yeah, now uh, already six athletes have come to the line. And it's worth pointing out that uh, Ida Valdal won that by a minute and 1.6 seconds. That's the final advantage she had as she came over the finish line. And in fifth place, Margot Mendes de Leon, five minutes, 22.47 off the lead. And Ida Valdal came from behind in that one to really just get stronger and stronger as the race went on. So and congratulations, here we those the, provisional times coming in. We have the two Spaniards with, um, I think it's uh, Maria Ordenes as well as um, as uh, Maria Costa Diez and also um, Noemi Juno, the Italian, who are in their first year as a senior. So yeah, great race for them because uh, it's quite complicated when you're starting the senior category. There is a lot more people at the start. They are stronger as in the U20 categories and I think they're doing a really great race. That's Sarah Dreyer at the bottom there, the Austrian. The vertical specialist. Joining. Yeah, she absolutely loves going straight up. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy skills. She also likes to have her favourite music in her ear when she's running. She teaches uh, German and PE when she's not out on the slopes. <laughs> And like so many of these athletes we hear, she got hooked on it at an early age after being introduced by ski touring, either by friends or family. As we take a look at our race winners from the women's, I think these are the women's under 20s, aren't they? They're on the finish line here. Yeah, because the youth 18 category of the women, uh, nobody has come to the line. And uh, Laia Celes Sanchez was his friend, but uh, yeah. not at the at the finish line uh, still. And we're trying to see where the U20 men category is going. So it was Jules Rebo who was in front at the first uh, split time, followed by Herman De Bertolis, who had done a really great start. Fourth, uh, third, sorry, was Elliot Robinsage. Fourth, Simone Campagnoni. And fifth, Mathieu Fariza. But they were all uh, into, uh, I would say, 20 seconds. So it's really, really uh, tight at the first speed time. And we're waiting for the second one to see uh, where this race is going for the U20 men category. 
This is going to be an exciting finish in this one, potentially. And we're enjoying some beautiful pictures from Flen, the French resort that is playing host to the individual race in the 2024 ISMF European Championships, where we're waiting for a little few more finishes, but we have completed the women's under 18s, sorry, we haven't the under 18s, the under 20s race of the women's has been completed. Provisionally, Ida Valdal has uh, won that one. And, and this is, I think, uh, Laia Celeste Sanchez, the first the under 18. Great race. Yes, she yeah. is. One hour, two minutes, 21.64 seconds. And she doesn't even need to have a little lie down at the end of the race. <laughs> she has absolutely dominated this. She led from the start, built up a 30 second lead pretty much just under at that first split. And it's really and impressive because, she, yeah, sorry, she just has done two minutes more than the U18, uh, U20 categories. So really impressive because it was a huge battle at the front of the U20 categories with Ida Waldal and Luis Tranca. And uh, battling all alone, she has just, just done an incredible time with one hour and two minutes. And time for a photo with her teammate. So good for the first one, of course, in the finishing line, U20 women category. She looks like she could go out and do it again. That is incredible. All those hours of training on the bikes, on the road, in the gym, and more importantly, on the mountain, paying off. And with our provisional scores, she is. The under 18 the European champion in the individual race. And at the last uh, split time. From her? We're going to hear from her here potentially? Maybe. Uh, so sorry, we aren't able to, to listen to the interview. But uh, at the last split time, it was her teammate, Spaniard also, um, Eina Gareta Farus, who was uh, two minutes behind. So yeah, incredible race for Laia. She's just uh, all alone in its own world, I would say. And um, at the last split time, it was um, still uh, three athletes that were able to climb on the podium for the second and third place. So it will be really interesting to see uh, how it's going to be uh, at the end. Three Italians as well with the Winter Olympic Games mm -hmm. coming up in Italy in two years time. And I think she's going to be having a nice hot shower before the rest of the field finishes on this one. That was quite some performance from Laia Celia Sanchez. And conditions looking absolutely stunning out there. Able to climb out of that cloud into the sunshine over the finish line. Oh, it seems that it's going to be a sprint for the end. Ah, and we are back with the boys. The U20 men. Who are down in the cloud at the moment. And just taking a look at the standings there as we jumping over because we're trying to keep on top of everything that's happening here for you. Jules Réon, Rebo of Italy, uh, sorry, of France, ahead at the first split, ahead of Amman de Bertoli. We have another Spaniard. Is that a one, two, three for Spain in the women's race? In the women's under 18s? Yeah, I think it's the teammate of uh, Laia, Eina Gareta Farus. Ah, yes, you see, I'm, I'm already waiting for third and fourth place to come in, but she was so far ahead. Yeah, impressive last uphill for her also because she was uh, really close to the other and uh, yeah, she arrived uh, all alone. So, really impressive. Again, 
and she just looks so comfortable <laughs> over the line. And potentially, as we wait for the official uh, confirmation of the results provisionally, silver medalist. Is that a security check she's going through? <laughs> yeah, because you have to uh, compulsory material to have in your bag. And um, for the at least three first of the race, you have to, to show to the organization what you have in your bag and uh, see if uh, all the compulsory material is in it. I thought it was more like an airport style security check that she's going to have to get her little bag out that has all her fluids in just a sm small class cl uh, clear bag. But no, um, far more important to check that the skins are there, that the um, safety equipment, the thermal blanket, the tracker, and we have our first Italian coming through. Second place, silver medal for the UK and that is Melissa Bettolina. She's overtaken Martina Scola, her Italian teammate. Yeah, really great uh, last uphill because at the last uh, speed time she was um, fourth. So, so she has done really a great uh, last half here so. And I'm not sure, but uh, oh, I think it's is. the sister. <laughs> of, uh, yeah. That's what it feels like when you don't make the podium. You've done all the hard work and then somebody gets the bronze medal ahead of you. It just hurts that bit more. Yeah, it's Martina, Martina Scola who came, yeah. who came uh, fourth. And I think... Um, Melissa Bertolina is the sister of uh, Samantha Bertolina, who is not present uh, for this uh, championship, but she's also a, a strong athlete. She has done some medals in the U23 categories last year. So, yeah. This it's is Vanessa Marca. Making it three Italians in the top five. And boy, she's put everything into getting that fifth place. I think it was a terrible last uphill for, for them. Yeah. It was it, a huge fight. I feel their pain. That's exactly what you don't want, isn't it? You're absolutely dying. And someone says, can you take your picture? Yeah, OK, I'm smiling. I'm smiling, but it hurts. It really hurts. Fantastic photo. That's worth keeping. And this incredible bunch of under 18 year olds, future of ski mountaineering. And we'll just provisionally give you those scores. We'll, we'll have confirmation precisely of uh, where everybody finishes when the classified Results are handed our way in the men's under 18, as it stands, Luca Curioni of Italy finished ahead of Enrico Pellegrini and Arno Musa of Switzerland. Big smiles. Fantastic social media from a lot of the women competing in ski mountaineering. They take us to places that we can't necessarily get to ourselves. Beautiful photographs, great reels and videos posted. And plenty of smiling photographs when the race is over. And maybe we can talk about the women race, senior women race, because uh, we have the first split time already five minutes ago. So Ana Alonso Rodriguez was first in front of Alba de Silvestro. Third was Caroline Ulrich. Fourth, Lisa Moreschini. And fifth, Katia Mascherana. Uh, Celia Peria Pesce was sixth. And Tove Alexanderson was quite um, away from the, um, from the podium at the first split time, but uh, I think it will evolve during the, the first uh, long uphill. 
Yeah, it's just 15 seconds between that top six, which is interesting. And Torbert Anderson is about 35 seconds. Is that 30 seconds behind, which potentially after the first split, well, it can be a, a slip skin. It can be a great transition that can win that time back for you as we just watch the final checks for the under 18s women. The under 20s, provisional results, Ida Valdel of Norway coming home a minute and 1.6 seconds ahead of Louise Trincaz of France, Troncaz, sorry, of France, who had led from the start of the race, but was overhauled. And we have also the second split time for the U20 men category with the three first. So Jules Rebo is still in front, the French, following by Simone Compagnoni, the Italian, and third is Elliot Robinsage, the French also. So the three first uh, under 20 men have already gone past the second split time. And this is Lim Pollinger, the Swiss, who has given all. And this will not be their only races for some of these athletes. They will be ready to go again for either the vertical or the sprint. Or both. Leo, which was your favourite category? What was your favourite competition? I know you've taken some time out for your studies now, but which is your favourite? We're going through a transition here, actually. Hold that thought. as we. Yeah, this is the U20 category with uh, the two Swiss guys. Um, and uh, on the run. And we've got so it's, uh, um, Max Palmi uh, as, well. as well in the red. We've got the, uh, uh, the sorry in the blue with the red rucksack. That is our Andorran Max Palmit Yalvia. And the Swiss is underway. Now one of our Romanian competitors. And this is, uh, I think, it's uh, Tove Alessanderson. Oh, it is, yeah. yep. So... She's out on her own, isn't she? And yeah. where is she in the race? Maybe is she leading already the race? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> it seems quite strange. And at the side of the track, we could see um, Yannick Ecker, the Swiss uh, trainer, who was... Uh, um, a great athlete also, he I had won the, the, the Patrouille des Glaciers in 2010. Plenty of experience there. Yeah, for sure, yeah. And as again, we, we mentioned what an incredible athlete uh, Tove Anderson, Alexanderson is. I uh, have her, was it nine gold medals at the World Orienteering Championships, 10 gold medals at the World Ski Orienteering Championships. In 2018, she won the Sky Marathon event at the Sky Running World Championships. It was only her second Sky Running race ever. 21, she won the combined discipline at the World Championships of Ski Mountaineering. And in 23, a silver medal in the up and down discipline at the World Mountain and Trail Running Championships. There are a lot of miles in those legs. There's a lot of pain in the past that could be fueling her determination on this climb. And it does look like she's pulled herself in front. Yeah, I think she's leading in front of Anna Alonso. And uh, behind, I don't know who it is. Ah, it's uh, Celia peria -Pesse. Yeah, so I think the, wow. um, the favourites are in front because... Uh, but it's really impressive to see that Teve was 40 seconds behind Anna Alonso at the first transition. And now she, she's leading by, I think, uh, <laughs> at least 15 seconds. So, yeah, really impressive uh, first uphill for, for Teve Alessanderson. And uh, Anna Alonso and Celia peria -Pesse are really strong also. They have done a really great season last year. And, uh, yeah, really... Wow. 
Yeah, the race is uh, as I expected, I would say. So, uh, do we see Alba Di Silvestro there? That is number... No, we haven't, because she was, she was in second at the first split as well, so she must have dropped a little further back. But yeah, it's, <laughs> it is a real impressive move from Tove Alexanderson. Yeah, and for sure she's the, um, with the absence of uh, Axel Gachemelare and uh, Julia Murada and also Emilia Arup, uh, I think she's the best in the up here. But, she's 13th, uh, we have 13th to see at that first split. Yeah, but we have to see because uh, in the downhill I think she's not the best and maybe uh, she will lose a bit of time. But uh, as we see, she's gaining more than one minute in total, I think, in this uphill and uh, she will be really hard to catch. Je peux prendre le relais, c'est bon si tu veux. Vas-y. Thanks to the cameraman because they are following the athletes and it's not easy to to do nice uh, pictures as well as following the this, this rhythm. Is, so this thanks is like riding them. riding on board, isn't it? Really, it's uh, the onboards you'd get in in the World Rally Championship, right up in the action. Uh, yeah, camera operators are putting in the legwork for us as well. A little bit too and maybe a, dirty a for the drone to be up in the air. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And uh, here we can see maybe uh, not an attack, but uh, an acceleration from Celia peria -Pesse. Changing the track in order to pass by um, Ana Alonso. And be, be in her own stride, but not having to follow the stride of somebody in front as well. As we almost crest this part of the hill. We have plenty of spectators out on the mountain as well, which is magnificent. As they make the turn. So um, Celia Periapese was third last year in the World Cup overall standing. And uh, she was sixth during the last uh, World Championship last year in individual race. And uh, Ana Alonso was fifth overall World Cup last year. and. Uh, she has done two podiums during the last season in the individual race, sorry. So they are really strong athletes. And uh, as you can see, Tovelle Sanderson is in front, but uh, nearly on her own. And behind there are these two girls who are really strong. And behind there is a, quite a huge gap, I think, with the, with the Italians, as uh, ah, we oh, can see here. Go. So it's Alba de Silvestro in fourth, also a strong athlete. She has done two um, World Cup podiums last year in individual, and she was also a third in the in the European Championships last year, and uh, second last year in the World Championship individual. So she's also a, a really strong athlete. I think she looks a little tired as she's going up here. Albert de Silvestre, you can see how cold the conditions are. The the hair that has crept out from under her hat is frozen and it is cold on the mountain, but fantastic conditions for ski mountaineering as we watch the women's senior race with the under 23s also here. That was Tove Alexanderson on her descent as we're just hanging fire here to see quite how big that gap is between her and Beria. Pesse of France and Alonso of Spain. And I think and I'm not you sure, might have but counted that just right, Leo. It could be could be as much as a minute. Yeah, and I think in fifth place, I'm not sure, but uh, it can be... Uh, this is Celia Peria uh, Pesse and Ana Alonso in the downhill. And I think in fifth, it can be um, Johanna Himmer of Austria. And here there is, I think, the first under-23 athletes with uh, Caroline Ulrich and uh, Katia Mascherona following the, the others. But maybe we, we have a better information at the end of the, of the second down here at the second split time. This is shaping up to be, as we hoped, a very open race with 
the big names of Emily Arrow and Julia Maruda out due to illness. And of course, on maternity leave, uh, Axel May. And here is the last uh, the transition at the end of the second down here. So we're waiting for Tove Alexanderson and we will be able also to see the the advance that she has made uh, during the, the first long uphill. Heavy cloud, but lifting a little, which is improving our vision of what's going on on these lower slopes. Poles on the right, skis on the right for any possible replacements that might be required as we wait for the transition from our athletes. It has been a pretty good day so far for fans of ski mountaineering. Laia Silla Sanchez taking the provisional win in the women's under 18. Luca Curioni for Italy in the under 18 men's. Ida Valdel of Norway in the under 20 women's. And we're just keeping an eye as well on the men's under 20s. Jules Rebo, here we go. Tovea Alexanderson is in to the transition zone. Poles down. Bindings off. Skins come out. And she gets them on the skis before she tries to unfurl them. And there. And as, uh, they have as closed I the said, gap, uh, haven't they? Yeah, 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 for sure. As I said, uh, Tove isn't that good in downhill because she's, uh, yeah, she's not coming from Skimo, so... It's quite a new sport for her, and uh, as we say, see, uh, Celia Peria Pese and Anna Alonso has done have done a, a great down here. And so, who is the? Who's uh, so? Is that? Is that uh, Ellen Blenau as well? The, or is that another? Who is the other Swede we have here? Let's have a little look. And I think that's one of the. I think it's a U20 man. Yeah, yeah, Jonathan Anderson. Also, uh, it's Jonathan yeah, Anderson. Also yeah. the green bib. Well spotted. And Alba de Silvestro in fourth. But you can see that the gap for the podium is already quite huge and uh, it will be complicated complicated to come back to to the battle for the podium. And maybe we can talk about the refreshment because uh, it's the zone where you can when your coach can give you a bottle of uh, of something to drink or eat and uh, it's quite important because the race is quite long, like more than a, an hour, and you have to be to stay hydrated and uh, also uh, have some energy towards the nutrition. So the refreshment Fiercely zone burning is... Calories. Yeah, for sure. So, so this, the um, refreshment zone is just uh, after the transition, and then you're starting the, the hub here. So we're talking the usual uh, isotonic and gels and anything that's easy to consume and quickly absorbed by the body are they warm drinks because we're out in the cold or is you know what what's what's the kind of preferred method of getting energy back into the body and hydration uh, the, obviously the the best way is to drink some um, some isotonic um, drinking because it's the easy way to to put it uh, in your stomach because eating something is quite complicated Gels are also uh, quite complicated because you really high with the hurt frequency and uh, it's quite hard to eat or even a gel to have a gel. So yeah, drinking and uh, it's not hot, but the coaches always keep the bottle in their vest. And uh, yeah, when the, um, the athlete arrive, they're just uh, giving it and so that the, the drink isn't that cold. And we can say that uh, Johanna Himmer is uh, fifth, I think, with uh, Caroline Ulrich in uh, in sixth position. So great race for her. And uh, yeah, Margot Ravillier in eighth. 
Candice Bonnell in 9th, Lorna Bonnell in 10th. But you can see that for the top 10, it's really close and uh, it will be interesting. But for the podium, as we said, it's uh, quite uh, already done, I think. We hope that uh, any athlete will have a problem, but uh, I think for the podium, it's uh, quite uh, already done. This is fascinating stuff. And you mentioned some of the the younger competitors because this is the senior women and the under 23s and uh, Mogul Ravenel is one of those who impressed at the Winter Youth Olympic Games. I think she picked up two bronze medals and a silver uh, for France. It was actually born in England at Frimley Green, but to French parents. And this is um, Perrine Gendre and Tibet Design. Tibet was uh, on the podium last year in the World Championships um, U20 category. So, uh, no, sorry, I've done a mistake. She was, uh, sorry, I'm a bit lost in my notes. Uh, she was on the podium. She was third in the U20 women during the 2022 season. Yeah. in the European Championships. And uh, yeah, she's quite young, first year in the senior category. And uh, yeah, she's doing great because being 16th in this level of racing, it's uh, really impressive. Learning all the time as well. And you only learn from competing against the best and we've got the very best Europe has to offer at these championships in Flen 2024 already. And as you can see in the splits, Tove Alexanderson of Sweden is out in front at the moment. And she is looking to keep Celia Perilla Pesse of France and Anna Alonso Rodriguez of Spain at bay. Those two are hot on her tail. I'm not sure, but uh, it seems to be Katia Mascherona, also a U23 athlete. And uh, you could see the technique she was using. It's quite a modern one, brought by the mixed relay. Um, you're not folding your, your skins, but you're just rolling it. So when you arrive at the, the end of the... When you're using a new pair of skins, you just have to like make a huge movement and it will unfold the... Uh, really easily and uh, this technique is quite modern and as i said brought by the mixed relay yeah it's yeah, quite it's quick Mascarona. Nice. yeah yeah it's really quick and uh, as in the mixed relay they have i think three uphills you have really to be fast and so all the athletes are bringing three pairs of skins and they are using these techniques so uh, yeah it's quite a huge gain of uh, time and she chooses not to take a bottle from her coach, unless she's popped it inside her vest at that point. Potentially, yeah, it's been potentially tucked in. But here we go with the men again, the under-20 men. This is Eduardo Mottini making his climb out of the gloom towards the light. He is on his own at the moment. And we're waiting for the arrival of the first uh, under 20 men. I think they're quite close to the end of their race. This is a field that is quite well spread out, but yes, we uh, head towards the finish line. Now let's have a little recap, Leo, of how things were standing at the end of those second splits. It was Jules Rebaud of France, and he had a 
Just over 15 second lead on Simone Campanoni of Italy, who was very closely tracked by Elliot Robin Saige. In fact, that whole top five is pretty close together. Top four separated by half a minute. So it is going to be interesting to see quite how close they are as they come down to the finish line for the final climb. And this is uh, Mathieu Fariza followed by Max Dourdet, the Endoran. Yeah, and you can see that the visibility is quite low. I hope it's not a problem for the athletes during the downhill, but uh, yeah, white on white, <laughs> it's quite complica <laughs> complicated to see the the bumps and so on in the downhills. So I, I hope they have the, the good uh, equipment with the good uh, goggles, as we said before, with uh, yellow or orange lens. Asaman Debertolis of Italy. He's come out of the gloom. And sorry, I think uh, we've forgotten that there is uh, one uh, uphill more for the U20 men. So they're not going to finish uh, as Just soon. Yet. Uh, yeah, so the, we have to wait a bit because they are at the, at the, the top of the last uh, long uphill and then there is the last uh, uphill. 350 meters to do in order to, to go up to the finish line. Now, just seeing on my uh, timing screen, we have a penalty has been applied to Bib 104. Um, we'll see how that unfolds. That is Robin Sage Elliott. But and also in the U20 women category, um, it seems that Ida Waldal had the penalty also one minute, but uh, as she was in front of Luis Franca <laughs> of one minute and one second, she's still uh, on the top of the podium, but it, it has to be confirmed. But uh, if it's the case, it's quite a lucky move for Ida Waldal because uh, one minute is huge and uh, winning by the last second is... Uh, yeah, that's Quite incredible lucky for her. Yeah, my maths is isn't great, but uh, I can take that away from there. Yeah, it'd be something like one point six seconds would be the victory margin of victory for Ida Valdal, which is why I was checking before the race. If we do get down to a nail biking, nail biting sprint for the line, which part of equipment signals the win? Now you're telling me it's the, the tip of the boot over the line will decide who wins if it's that close. Yeah, so uh, it's a photo finish made by the the persons of the um, of the time MSO, a Swiss um, a Swiss um, company. And uh, yeah, I just saw one time a photo finish. It was uh, during the 2018 uh, European Championships in uh, Etna with uh, the, I, I think it was the U20 sprint men with the third place who was uh, decided with a photo finish. And it was said that uh, the two athletes were just uh, in the same time. And so it, uh, the organization gave two uh, bronze medal this day. <laughs> so it was quite uh, quite uh, funny to see this, but yeah, it's not that uh, common to have a photo finish. And I I know also that uh, during the um, the U twenty men category uh, European Championship two years ago, um, Robin Buss uh, Thomas Bussard and uh, and um, sorry um, Anselm Damvin who were fighting yeah. for the title and Anselm just won by, I think, uh, 0.2 second in front of Thomas. So I don't know if it was a photo finish, but uh, it was really, really close. But it's quite unusual in Skimo, especially in, in individual races, because uh, it's quite long and uh, athletes have time to 
to have some gap between them. Always best to be prepared, not the tip of the ski, tip of the boots. If a medal's on the cards, it could be worth that final push. And we are watching the under 20 men at this point. We have the so senior we, women and the under 23s also on the track at the moment. We have the official results now for the under 18 women category. So first is uh, Laia Celeste Sanchez, followed by Melissa Bertolina in second place. And third is Martina Scola, the Italian also. And I think um, it was, yeah, it seems strange because, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it uh, no, no second place for a Spaniard as I thought, but uh, yeah. So Laia Celeste Sanchez in front of Melissa Bertolina and Martina Scola. So this is for the U18 women category. And also yeah, we thought, for that, the... we thought that Aina Gareta Farris had, had finished up in second there, didn't we? But, um, yeah. But not. So, uh, yeah. She and for the... U... Fifth place. Yeah, and for the under 20 women, we have uh, Ida Waldal in front of Luis Tranca by just 1.6 <laughs> seconds, as we said. And uh, in third place is uh, Lea Ancion Havet from Andorra. So really nice race because uh, Andorra also is quite a, a little team and uh, having a medal here is really, really a great race for her. Yeah, she started very strongly and yeah. was trying to lead from the front and, and win from the front. But it was a great switch around with Louise Trancas closing her down and then pulling ahead. She was actually 35 seconds Sorry, 40 seconds ahead of Ida Valdal at that first split. And Valdal had closed that down to just five seconds at the second split. And then an astonishing push for the finish line, picking up a one minute penalty, but winning by 1.6 seconds. That is a, a great win for Norway. And we and are also for the U tracking the event 18. at the end of the camera, uh, at the finish line here. We're just waiting for yeah. finishes to come. Yeah. And for the under 18 men, also we have the official results. So Luca Curioni finishes first in front of Enrico Pellegrini. And third is the Swiss guy Arno Moser, who has done uh, uh, quite a bad last transition putting back the the skins under the skis but uh, at the end he has done a really great uh, uphill and uh, yeah great race for him well deserved podium they say in triathlon you can't win a race in the transition but you can certainly lose it or lose positions and so many technical elements to this Leo of getting the skins out off the skis and then back on the skis at the right time. And we have seen some of the ski mountaineers struggling in these transition zones and others kind of skipping through it in just a few seconds. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, really important to be well trained in transition. And also it uh, requires a bit of experiment because like choosing the white skins, uh, making the right moves go, 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 go. it needs to be trained and also uh, be made in competitions I and uh, yeah for the younger athletes it's quite difficult at the start to have a, a good routine and good material so here we come yeah, back with uh, the senior women here Torve Alexanderson out in front coming through the gloom as she climbs towards the summit and potentially to the European Championship title in 2024. She was down after the first split, back in 13th place, but has absolutely turned things around massively. Had a 15 second advantage at the second split. We've got a third split coming up. So this race isn't over yet. She's been gaining time on the climbs losing time on the descents. Celia Peria-Pesse, second after the second split, 
and just over two seconds ahead of Ana Alonso of Spain with Alba Di Silvestro of Italy in fourth place and Johanna Heimer of Austria tucked in in fifth. Should point out as well, though, Caroline Ulrich of uh, Switzerland is amongst those under 23s that are, well, they're just so impressive and uh, maturing nicely in this glorious sport of Schemo. And we have uh, an indication for the um, under 20 men category with the last uh, split time. So Jules Rebo was still in the front with um, a lead of 30 seconds, 25 seconds mm -hmm. uh, in front of Simone Compagnoni. And third was Elliot Robinsage. And uh, in fifth, uh, in fourth, sorry, also Herman De Bertolis, who has done a terrible, uh, Quatre minutes. No, uh, sorry, an incredible uh, start at the What? beginning of the race. So yeah, the, they are just, uh, it will be a huge fight for the podium because they are, the first one is 25 seconds in front of the second and the third one is eight seconds behind the second. So yeah, it will be interesting to see uh, how it will uh, finish. Let's just keep an eye on this women's senior race as Tova and Alexanderson comes out of the gloom. And she's closing up on someone in front of her who is not part of this women's senior race. I don't think she is out in front on her own. And thanks to our camera operator who gave us a helpful glance back yeah, down the slope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is the French woman. Yeah, Celia peria who is yeah, yeah. in second place. I think she has done a, a great uh, beginning of the uphill because Ana Alonso seems to be behind with a gap of, I think, 10 seconds at least. And she's also coming out into the sunlight, which is kind of giving us an idea of whereabouts they are on the track. As that low-lying cloud has been filling the valley ever since we came on air, ever since the racing started. This is and the first of the full races at the European Championships. We've got the vertical and the sprint to come. And we'll be back with the mixed relay competition on Friday. That's going to be a night race as well, but keeping our eyes firmly on the individual races at the moment. Sorry, Leo. Yeah, we could see the French coach that was um, at the side of the track. He's giving some information about the gap she has on uh, Tavelle Sanderson, also the gap she has on the third, Anna Alonso. And uh, these indications are quite helpful for the athlete because uh, you need to be concentrated and not look back or too much in front because it will be quite uh, complicated for your mental if you do so. So the, the coach uh, is giving uh, some, informa uh, some important information to the athlete. I want to ask you about um, the pole technique that um, the athletes have, because, you know, it's all very easy to talk about how strong the legs need to be for this competition, as well as the lungs and pretty much everything else. But the proper technique with the poles will also take some of the pressure off the lower body, I'm guessing. Yeah, for sure. And it helps also the, the skins to, to grip on the snow because uh, today it's not quite a problem because the, the track seems not to be too slippery. But if the, the, the snow is uh, icy, you have to be really putting some uh, strength in your arms. And uh, today you can see that there is fresh snow. So the, it's not easy to have a regular um, using of poles. So they're doing a, a movement that is like more uh, helping to save some energy but it's uh, really uh, efficient to be to come up the, the hill. So mm -hmm. every little bit helps when you are climing a mountain. And maybe this is Tove Alice Anderson already. That's the transition. At the... Yeah, I'm we can not see sure the because there the skin's coming the... off at the top on somebody. Yeah, but maybe it's a U under 20 men. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a under 20 men. I think. Is yeah, it? Yeah. I don't 
I know, I'm not sure. I think it is. I think that's Tove Alexanderson. I think yeah, sorry, it's yeah, Guaycon. So the, this is uh, Gael Alvarez del Val, who was one of the um, under-20 men who was overtaken by Alexanderson 114. And this is Ana Alonso Rodriguez, currently in third place, tucks in, trying to close the gap, should I say, on Celia Pera Pese. And she's got a little bit of work to do if she wants to, to close that gap. But we have another split to come. There's still plenty of metres left in this race. If you can see the cloud filling the valley there. The most beautiful. Ah, close. Yeah, and as I said, uh, Alba yeah? De, yeah, Alba de Silvestro is really strong in the um, individual races. And we can see here that she's uh, closing the gap with Ana Alonso. So, uh, yeah, maybe the podium isn't done, as I said. I spoke too, too quickly. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> it will be interesting to see uh, how it will uh, it will be. Because there's still um, one uphill, one long uphill to be done. Oh, I'm, no, no, they are going to do the, the last uphill, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, yeah. because there are only two long uphills. So, yeah, yeah, they are going straight to the, to the um, finish line. Sorry. Ah. I thought we had another split. I'm not uh, not sure about that, so I will... Back to your wisdom here, and we're seeing on the left the men warming up for the senior and under 23 men's start. See a red at the moment. As... But uh, yeah, as I said, they are going uh, down the, um, the transition zone and there is the split time, but uh, they're not going up as no. they, they were up to now. They are going to turn around the transition zone and going uh, up to the finish line. But there will be a, a time uh, split at the end of the last up, uh, down the hill. Sorry. Well, let's take a look at the final race of the day to get underway. This is the senior men and the under 23s will also yeah. be starting in this one as well. The conditions, how have they changed since the beginning of the day? The, we know it's cold on the mountain. We know there's been no wind. The track is very different from what was faced by the under-20 men to start with. What would you say the conditions would be like out there now, Leo, from your experience? I think the, for the downhill, it will be easier because a lot of people have uh, already skied down the, the downhill. And uh, it is the same also for the uphill because... Um, the snow will be a bit more hard, not icy, but a bit more packed. So it will be, uh, I think, uh, even quicker. And here we can see Tove Anderson in the last transition before the last uphill of 350 meters. And we're waiting for uh, Celia peria Pesse, who has second behind her at the end of the, the last uh, uphill. Checking her skin is precisely placed, poles up, yeah. and she is away. Now, where is the chasing pack? Ah, well that oh, that's the that's the yeah, under twenties, uh, um, yeah. Gail Alvarez. And this is Tovale Sanderson, as I said, turning around the transition zone. And here is Celia Peria in second. So, yeah, it will be quite a complicated last uphill because uh, Tove is really, really strong in uphill. But still, it's a, it's a great performance for Celia. Positioned herself mm. right at the edge of the uh, transition zone there as well so that she can get out as quickly as possible. Not too long behind her, we're going to see Rodriguez. And... With uh, Alba de Silvestro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a that's a very good transition, I would say. So we could see that uh, no refreshment for Celia. I think she is uh, in so much um, yeah pain, and also she can't breathe uh, properly. So it's really difficult to to, to drink. 
so she's just uh, skipping the, the refreshment. And here's Alba de Silvestro, followed by Ana Alonso. So battle for the for the third third place, the bronze medal. It will be really interesting because I think they're quite the same level in uphill. Oh, this and, is uh, this is a transition mindset, though, isn't it? Trying to not look at what your opponent's doing, and do it quicker. Not yeah, be rushed they're by them. The, they're doing the both great. So, ah, no mistakes. No mistakes. They're so close Ooh. together. Rodriguez the skins just aren't, the just skins aren't the edge. <laughs> sticking properly on the skis. Maybe it will be a problem. I hope not, but uh, yeah. And this is the senior men's start. Yeah. All to, all to happen in the women's senior race, but we are going to see the final race of the day get underway. The individual race for senior men at the ISMF European Championships in 2024. And the hot favourite, Remy Bonnet of Switzerland, wearing the number one with Thibaut Anselme of France, number two, Matej Eidelin in third. I mean, we don't have to look too far to see who's going to be on the podium here, Leo. Yeah, but still, uh, it will be quite uh, interesting because the Italians are really close to each other. I think Remy is going to make a, a huge start like... Uh, he really wants to be all alone for all the race, but uh, yeah, we will see because uh, there is all the Italians like uh, Matteo Edalin, Robert Antonioli, Nadir Maguet, but there is also the French guys like uh, William Bombardion, Xavier Gachet, also uh, Maximilien Drion, the Belgium can do a great race. And uh, there is also some uh, under 23 athletes like uh, Paul Verniak, especially, who is really, really strong but also uh, the Bussard brothers. And uh, yeah, there is quite a lot of people that can go into the top 10. Also Anselm Damvin, who is the, the world champion under 23 last year. So yeah, I'm quite excited to come in this race because it will be really interesting to, to see. We can just see the slightest of breezes coming down the mountain as the mist just edges over that crest beyond the start arch. This is the biggest field in the mass start we've had today. So we'll be keeping a close eye on potential broken poles or lost skis at the start. And we just got an information because uh, number seven, so William Bombardion, will not start the, the race today. Quite a pity for him because uh, it's a, a legend of the sport. He was already a world champion in 2013. So, yeah, he's really experiment, experimented and uh, unfortunately we won't be able to start today. Looking at the athletes here as well, they're unzipped. It is the sun has come out for the men's race. They are looking a little bit less wrapped up than we've seen the earlier starters, even with that breeze, as they're on their marks. And underway in the men's senior race of the 2024 European Champions, the ISMF title up for grabs. Senior men and the under 23s as they head off literally into the sunset. We're into the afternoon here at Flen in France. A late start due to tricky weather conditions earlier. But that is just meaning that we're saving potentially some of the best racing till last. We've had plenty of good action so far. We have confirmed winners in the under 18s, the under 20s. The women's senior race is continuing at the moment. But what is going to happen here and who will be crowned European champion in around 50 minutes time, would it be? Yeah, it's quite strange because Rémy Bonnet, the biggest favorite, he was a world champion last year in an individual race. He usually is doing a, a huge start, but uh, today he's not, uh, he's like in 10th uh, position, so it's quite strange to see him here. And uh, I think it's not starting too, too quickly. Well, we've seen in some of the earlier races that a quick start doesn't guarantee a gold medal. 
And we've seen some of our ski mountaineers come from quite a distance behind to claim victory. As we keep an eye on who's heading over there as soon as we've got a clear shot of so the numbers. So there is uh, Robert Antonioli in front with uh, Nadir Maguet and uh, also Thibaut Anselme. And this is the under 20 category. So I hope we've got the result because, yeah, no well, that's, result. That's uh, Jules yeah. Raybaud, yeah. who is, um, looks to be first over the line and he's being joined. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's uh, it's teammate Elliot uh, Robin Sage who is in second position. I'm not sure, and um, I think the Italian. I don't know. Maybe it's Simone Campagnoni. I'm not sure, but he's in third. But uh, it really has to be confirmed because we don't have the time. There we go. That looks like somebody who feels like a winner today. <laughs> Oop, there's a little... It's all right to trip at this point, uh, but that is Jules Rebo, the one I want. Being congratulated by, as you said, Elliot Robinsage. And this first is the transition. first transition of the men. So Thibaut Anselme is uh, going up down the first. Really impressive, but he's a good sprinter, so for him, 60 meters high is not a problem. And you can see that there is a lot of athletes going down at the same time. It's it's really important to to do good uh, transitions because, uh, especially in the senior category, it can really help to to gain uh, easily positions in the race. And we have to say also that uh, Thibaut Selme is a really good uh, downhill her, so. Yeah, you won't lose any time in this downhill, even if he's uh, in front. Just getting a good idea of quite how bumpy it is, that descent as well. Yeah, yeah I think the visibility isn't that good, so it's quite challenging for the athletes. Just a reminder that the conditions were great this morning. There was plenty of powder wasn't too icy conditions were cold no wind and across the day a lot of these slopes are north facing so very little sun hitting them and causing any kind of melt and in fact this is probably the long, longest period of sun we've had across the day as we head towards the sun disappearing behind the mountains for the night And we will, you will see transition. in this transition, yeah, in this transition zone, it will be really, really packed because there is uh, nearly uh, 30 athletes all at the same time in the transition. So it's really important to go up to the the, the line. You 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 are not agreed to to pass this line, but uh, if you're going close to it, then you can go really fast out of the transition zone. So this is some uh, on the. 20 men. Wow. And we can see that uh, yeah, it's really, really close because uh, Thibaut Selme wasn't the first in the transition zone. That was a brilliant descent so, by the Norwegian. So it is, I think it's the Italians. Also, May has the yellow Madrid. helmet. Yeah, with the, the red sleeve and the white, just putting the yellow skis on now. And he's away. And he's starting first in the hub here. Second is Nadir Maguet. And third is Trim Lodonen, who is uh, really a young athlete. I think he's in the uh, second year of uh, under 23 athletes, so really young. As you can see, it's quite packed and it's complicated to find your way sometimes in this crowd. The slapping technique for the skins needs to be carefully deployed as well, because we're not going to slap somebody as they go past. Yeah, so for now it's quite uh, not easy to, to say. Something's gone in front, flying but in front of us there all... that's on the snow it needs will... to be picked up. 
Yeah, it will unfold uh, up to the first up here. There we go. That's his skins. Just in front of the camera is uh, Ot Ferrer, a Spaniard. Under 23 athlete also. Magic eyes, you have Leo, you can spot those numbers. And those athletes. Yeah, but uh, as I rest with with them, I don't have to uh, to see the numbers. I know them uh, from far, so it's more easy than the the younger categories. It is fascinating. It's great to have a really busy transition zone here, so you can actually see all the different techniques being deployed. And already uh, 52 athletes in the transition have come. So it's really impressive because it's really packed at the beginning of the race. Especially with uh, the first uphill uh, that was just 60 meters. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it was quite a challenge for the athletes because they, they really need, needed to be fast in the first uphill in order to have a good position into the first transition zone and uh, going down uh, in a good position. But now uh, it's easier. And the climb begins again for the senior men and the under 23s. Final race of the day. It is coming up to five to three local time. And we have the unofficial results because it has to be confirmed. But uh, for the under 20 men, it's Jules Rebo in third, in uh, first place, sorry, followed by Simone Compagnoni and uh, the French Elliot Robin Sage, who was second on the finish line, but had the one minute penalty. But uh, as I said, it has to be confirmed. And uh, fourth place for Debertolis Hermann, and fifth was uh, Eduardo Mottini. So 47.05, the difference between gold and silver. Uh, Jules Rebo taking top spot provisionally from Simone Campagnoni. And as Leo says, we'll wait for confirmation and classification of those scores. As we are yeah. watching the women, senior women here. I think it's uh, Maria Ordenes, the Spaniard. I'm not sure because she's uh, her friend, uh, Maria Ordenes is also uh, uh, Maria Costa Diaz and Maria Ordenez are quite close, even in races, and it's quite difficult to de tell them apart. So, sorry if I'm mistaken. We've got uh, Slovakia's Sara Machakova nearest the camera in the blue and red and white. Having a wrestling match with her skins, and we head up the hill. And I think it's Tove Alessandro. Just looking at the cloud line there. In the first, uh, in the last uh, uphill with his, uh, her special style, looking at the tip of the skis. Go, go, go. She's well clear. There is nobody in sight behind her at the moment. Allez, good job. And yeah, she great race for is her. Well, were, well used to finding her way on her own, albeit on skis or as an orienteer, sky runner. She's climbed out of the clouds to be on her own once again. I think it's not the, the technique to show in uh, skimo schools, but uh, we can see that it's it, efficient. Does this look more like a, an, an alpine cross country skiing style? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And also, uh, you have to be the upper part of your body has to be quite uh, up because it helps to push on the arms. But, you know, uh, as Jesse Diggins in uh, cross country skiing, sometimes the, the best techniques isn't uh, uh, compulsory to be to be effective no. and uh, going fast. So, yeah, we had a great runner in the UK, Paula Radcliffe, who used to bob her head. Uh, as an athlete and uh, running around the track and 
she kept being told that she was losing time and losing energy by bobbing her head and when she tried to stop it she couldn't run at all so it's definitely what's right for you and what works and this is definitely working for Tove Alexanderson of Sweden an absolute storming performance in the women's senior race she's closing in on European gold and she's even got a marker ahead of her to try and spur her on for the final ascent in Flen. The added bonus of when you get to the top, it's clear you're out of that cloud. All the marks and hills and burns in the snow become far more visible. And that's another reason why so many people take up Schemo is to enjoy the beauty of the mountains. But I think the thing that will look most beautiful to all of our athletes will be that finish line. And she's not so far away now. I think the, the track today is quite comparable to the first individual race of uh, last season, which, uh, which was in uh, Ponte di Legno in Italy because it was also a really short first uphill and then a, a last long uphill. So uh, yeah, it's quite the same track. And uh, as I said, finishing up uh, 350 meters is really, really hard because uh, you're looking back if somebody is catching up. And uh, yeah, especially with this track, you're really happy to, to arrive to the, um, to the finish line. Well, she's 31 years old and she comes from Borlänge in Dalamana County in Sweden and has overachieved in everything she's done, I think it's fair to say. Her first love was orienteering and she's moved on to the snow with ski orienteering and is now absolutely crushing it in ski -mo. That line... He's just over the crest for Tove Alexanderson. The sun glinting on the far peaks. And the cloud still relegated to the valley. She's leaving all of that behind. And that is the final turn. No. Oh, it is not Tove Anderson. Oh. That's no, he's no, caught me out a, again. He's caught me out again. Uh, under, under 20, 20 men. Here yeah. she comes. This is a fantastic performance by Tove Alexanderson. And look at the effort, even to those final few yards. She crosses the line one hour, 19 minutes, 36.09 seconds. She's got enough energy to stop her own watch, to clock her time. And she is provisionally the European champion in the individual race. What a performance. Yeah, really and impressive. For from, <laughs> really impressive for Tove because she was, I think, like uh, fourth line at the starting line. And uh, at the first split time at the end of the first uphill, she was uh, 13th, I think. And uh, she was able to do a really impressive second, uh, really impressive second uphill because she she had uh, catched. Uh, I think she was first, yeah. So she catched uh, twelve positions in uh, one single yeah. uphill, and then she was able to finish the the work with the the title at the end. So really impressive. And here is Celia Periapese. I think she's in um, second position. And uh, behind there is, uh, I think, a huge battle between uh, Anna Alonso and also um, Alba de Silvestro. Yeah, just a couple of seconds between those two. At the final split, Alexanderson was a minute and five seconds ahead of Periapese. And Already, uh... she looks like she is going to be comfortably in second place yeah. by, again, by just so. under a minute. Just checking. There's nobody creeping up on her. 
Yeah, it's really um, it's really cool to to be able to finish in this way because if you have to sprint, it's really really hard because you always look looking your your adversary and so so if you are able to finish all alone with no pressure, it's uh, even more uh, profitable. Well, Celia Saya says that she uh, could ski as soon as she could walk, and the mountains. And being in the mountains are what attracted her to Skimo. And she will be back on Friday, definitely, because she's part of the super team with Thibaut Anselmat for France in the mixed relay. And it's going to be a silver medal for her. 26-year-old yeah. is a silver medalist at the European Championships. Yeah, since last year, she is really making uh, her way to the top uh, of Skimo because she was already third in the overall classification last year. And uh, she's very, really, really consistent in the World Cup circuit, always making uh, at least top 10 in each discipline. So, yeah, congrats to her, because uh, even if the favourites aren't uh, here, it's a really deserved uh, medal. And as we can see, it's Alba de Silvestro, I think, in third place. That's... Maybe it will be a really close finish. Let's have a look, see. We've got our team. She's definitely got a sprint on here, because she potentially knows that Ana Alonso Rodriguez is hot on her heels. That's that final turn. The line is in sight. And another medal for her after the third place in the European Championship two years ago and also a second last year in the World Championship. So yeah, really consistent also in the, in the individual and a well-deserved medal. High performance athlete now, former ski guide, former ski teacher. Loves her life in the mountains. Oh, I think she loves that medal. A bronze medal for Alba Di Silvestro of Italy, who has managed to throw off the Spaniard. Yeah, also. I think it was quite uh, complicated last appeal for Ana Alonso because uh, she seems quite... Uh, away from uh, Alba. Yeah, quite a pity, but uh, as always, she's a uh, part of the top five and uh, Ana Alonso is also a really strong athlete, also really consistent. And uh, all these women are really the the future of Skimo for some years because uh, they're still quite young and uh, performing really well. Pop those away for another day. And it's quite cool because you can see the the hair of uh, Alba. Beautiful really, ice um, highlights. Yeah, so I think it's Very quite uh, <laughs> quite uh, it's quite uh, icy at the bottom of the race because it's under the the frog, and I think uh, yeah, they are happy to come out of the frog and uh, then going to take a hot shower. Lovely bright light on the horizon. And a chance to rest up. Potentially, we will hear from the athletes. We'll and this is the podium crossed. of the under 20 and the under 80 categories, I think. But there's still the, the men. They are doing their race. And Thibaut Anselme seems in the front. There he is, really all alone. And unlikely the, the women, all the, the best athletes are present here for this race in the men category. I know, I don't think so because uh, there is some... Now what's what's happening here? Just, yeah, I think it's uh, Robert Antonioli just in front of Thibaut Anselme. Not sure, but the technique seems quite the one of uh, Robert. Yeah. 
We're just beginning to lose a little of the light as the day draws to a close on the mountain, but still sensational pictures. And if you can't be there, the best place to be is watching with us. As we've got the drone in action, away from that fog, away from that low cloud. Yeah, yeah maybe one, Remy it's Bonnet. Remy Bonnet. Maybe it's uh, Remy Bonnet in front because he's uh, the biggest favorite for today. And uh, yeah. yeah, I think so because it seems that nobody in front. So Remy Bonnet ahead of uh, we still don't know who but uh, and then in third Thibaut Anselme yeah That's maybe it's uh, Robert Ant uh, I'm not sure but maybe it's uh, it's this so Remy Bonnet followed by uh, Robert Antonioli and then Thibaut Anselme but I'm really not sure and uh, we have to confirm it so no this Thank is Xavier Gachet fantastic fantastic this camera is... operator will answer this for us Xavier Gachet in second position yeah. so really impressive race for him because he's always strong in uh, individual but he's doing great today the French guy here he is have a nice close up he's looking pretty comfortable we can see Monet heading towards the transition zone just above him heading to the right and we'll see Gachet make the turn And it is his wife who has just given him another baby, I believe. Axel yeah. Gashim. And so he's a new dad. I wonder how much sleep he's been getting. Enough. To keep focused and be currently second in this individual men's race at the European Championships, the ISMF. We have to see because uh, Xavier Gachet is a really good downhiller, but Remy uh, last year especially has shown that he was really strong in all the aspects of uh, individual race. So I think uh, it won't make a huge difference, but uh, maybe uh, Xavier Gachet wants to come back uh, during the, the downhill. Yeah, I think the weather conditions have uh, enabled us to follow this a little bit more closely as well. stash skin number one okay. number two yeah you can see that he's making the transition really carefully in order to have good skins for the next uh, hop here so Xavier Gash in second position I think uh, a bit like 10 seconds after Remy Bonnet something like this and again not too much haste a little Stumble there and yeah, even a bit more than go. 10 seconds. We'll follow this with our drone camera as we watch the rest of the field climbing on the left. And Thibaut Anselme third, so I think uh, I was mistaken, it wasn't Robert Antonioli, sorry, it was uh, Xavier Gachet. So one Swiss at the, the start and two, one Swiss at the, the front with two French. And uh, fourth is uh, my great friend Aurélien Gay, so a Swiss guy. Really impressive to see him here. I'm quite happy. <laughs> and wow. uh, fifth is uh, Nadir Maguet. Took both his skins off quick there. Yeah, yeah, it's really quick. Yeah. That's a good technique. Oh, nice. He's off and I'm away. really happy to see uh, Aurélien at this place because, uh, yeah, we started Schemo together and, uh, yeah was a great great uh, competitor and still a great friend then it's uh, in seventh uh, in sixth place it's um, Maximilien Drion followed by Paul Verniac the first uh, under 23 athlete also doing a great race he's also a great uh, great uh, friend of mine and uh, then it's uh, Michele Boscacci the um, the Italian yeah, it's really interesting because the, the athletes are really close to each other and uh, it will be finished up to the finish line and not uh, before. So really interesting to see this. And here is uh, Robert transition so far, haven't we? Yeah. 
And maybe we have some indications about the senior women. Well, here we go. We've got so, some splits coming up. Yeah. So let's just state uh, just said... the splits on the men's men's at the moment. Here we've got transition. We'll come back to the women, but uh, his bonnet is into transition. Uh, yeah. He's a fifteen point five five up on Garchet. and let's see how quickly he can get out. Whether he can keep that advantage, and just making sure that there's plenty traction underneath those skis. Bindings on, poles up. Bonnet is out of transition. Cachet. You can see that at this level, all the athletes are doing great transitions and there isn't any mistake. So, yeah, you, you have to be efficient. And uh, also with the experiment you have, it's, uh, it really helps to be strong. And the uh, third, uh, Thibaut Selmé. So 55.69 behind our leader, Remy Bonnet. And In third place, is Nadir Maguet. Fifth is uh, Aurélien Gay. So he has lost uh, his position with uh, Nadir Maguet in the downhill, but still he's doing a great race because he's in. he was still uh, under 23 last year. So yeah. It's a really young athlete and he's doing really great. Maximilien Drion in sixth position. Also a great place for him. Both out of transition at the same time. But the gap are, are quite uh, already high, I would say, because uh, sixth at uh, 1 minute 30, it's quite huge already. So we'll see. And closing the top 10, there is uh, Michele Boscacci, 7th, Robert Antonioli, 8th, and uh, Paul Verniak, the first uh, on the 23 man, is 9th, uh, with uh, David Ganal, 10th, uh, Daniel Ganal, sorry. So two transitions. We've been up, we've been down, and it is back to the climb for the senior men in the under 23s. And that will be our final race to finish. But uh, elsewhere, we were just... You were going to make a point about the women, I believe, Leo. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as we said, um, but it's an official result still because we need to have the confirmation. But first is uh, Tovale Sanderson with a really great race. With uh, two minutes and 30 seconds in front of Celia peria -Pesse. Then is uh, Alba de Silvestro, who has done a really great end of the race, coming back to Ana Alonso. And uh, Ana Alonso finishing in fourth. And uh, fifth is uh, Johanna Himmer, the Austrian. Really great race also for her. Quite uh, consistent in uh, individual also last year, but uh, great result. Top five in the European Championship is great for her. Yeah, the final 20 minutes of the race really telling on uh, Ana Alonso Rodriguez, who had been right up there with Di Silvestro of Italy, had been just, uh, what was it, just over a minute. In fact, at the end of the, the third split, she was just two seconds behind her, but by the end of the race, um, it was significantly more than that. But that just shows what a great performance for Di Silvestro to actually take that bronze place behind Pera Passe and Alexanderson, who just deployed a textbook performance coming from a potentially slow start, I suppose, after that first split. But um, no, she just absolutely paced herself brilliantly. And we can see in red suit here, it's uh, Werner Marty, who was a European champion uh, two years ago in individual race, but this year, as well as, as last year, it was quite uh, complicated seasons for him. But uh, yeah, still complicated, but he has done great results uh, last year with a podium in a vertical race and also uh, a podium in the Mezzalama at the end of the season. So yeah, bad seasons for him, I think, but uh, some people would pay to have bad season as uh, he's having now <laughs> and uh, maybe with the experiment he will come back because uh, yeah the as i said the race isn't finished yet and uh, he's 
he can really pace himself to to come up to the front. So, on the mountain, we have the senior men and the under-23s. And it is shaping up to be a great race. As we follow the transitions with interest. That's uh, Adria Bartumeo Caramez of Andorra, the number 39 on the left there. And he is almost ready to head out, just getting his second skin on. With a Norwegian, that is Eric Carverton. I could see that during the, this transition, there is uh, already some struggle with the skins. So I think the, the weather is quite challenging for the, for the skins. And uh, it's really important to be cautious. Alba de Silvestro oh, let's have a listen in. medals uh, for Italy in this opening day, opening race of the European Championship. You confirmed the bronze medal of two years ago in Boitaul in 2022. Uh, you, were, you were fourth after the downhill. You uh, tried to recover with the uh, Ana Alonso from Spain. You did your best in the last uphill and what a satisfaction for the bronze medal. Yes, I'm uh, really happy about uh, a medal. It's a bronze one. <laughs> I hope for gold, but uh, maybe next year we will see. Uh, but I'm uh, really happy because I'm yes, I confirmed my, my podium of uh, two years ago and uh, the rest. Uh, I never won ne uh, no European, no World Championship, but always on the podium. So I'm happy with my constancy year by year. Uh, today was a really hard race because it's the first one. To be honest, I really like the downhill because it's a open space and uh, sometimes quite foggy and you can see nothing, but uh, the same downhill is like four times. So if you don't see, you remember from the, <laughs> the lab before. And uh, I was, uh, yes, behind uh, in the first part of the race. I get uh, my better. And I think uh, I get the third place in the downhill. And after I can confirm on the last uphill, I was quite lucky uh, because uh, Anna Alonso lost the skins more times on the last appeal. So it will be more funny if she don't uh, last, uh, lost the skins. So it will be a uh, more battle, but uh, I'm sometime happen. So next time, next time for her and uh, I'm happy about it. Thank you very much and good job. Thank you so much. Okay. Alba Di Silvestro getting bronze in the women's senior race and uh, yeah, talking us through what it's like to be under the cloud. And we will hear from our silver medalist now, I believe. Celia Peria PCI for France, a silver medal, a first medal for you during one European Championships. So a great satisfaction after the fantastic season of last year. Yes, uh, it was an incredible uh, race for me uh, today. Yes, uh, it's the first time uh, for me uh, in the European Championships, so uh, it's very good and uh, I'm very happy uh, of this uh, race, yes. And mainly because it is at home. Yes, uh, <laughs> with many supporters. Yes, with my father, uh, the staff, and uh, over uh, friends. Uh, yes, uh, it, it was good uh, to have uh, many uh, people uh, come here and uh, clap uh, for a French team. <laughs> Congrats. Thanks. See you. <laughs> okay. That was and maybe. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, sorry, but uh, maybe just an indication because um, uh, we were told that uh, Anna Alonso was losting her skis in the ah. last uphill, so it's one reason because... Tom uh, Alexanderson, gold medalist and the new European champion 2024. It's a fantastic comeback after the podium at the beginning of the season in the sprint in Val Thorens. This incredible gold medal here in France. Yeah, thank you. 
Are you satisfied? Did you expect to win the gold medals uh, or it was satisfaction for you also to be just in the podium? Oh, I'm really satisfied. Uh, always in the individual races, the course is the biggest challenge to manage to do it in uh, the best way. And it was a really tough day that out there, but uh, I really enjoyed it and I'm super happy with the win. In which point uh, you realized uh, that you could win? Uh, I had actually a really ba bad start because I did a crash in the first downhill and also my binding went in the wrong direction so I had to stop and uh, fix the b binding. So I think I was about uh, 40 seconds or something after uh, and then I had to uh, yeah, try to catch up the other but I didn't realize I was first so I was I thought I still it was people in front of me, so I was pushing, pushing, pushing to, oh, where are they? I don't see them yet. But then I heard that I was first, <laughs> but I was really tired then, so I, it was uh, really hard for me, the second part of the course, but I was uh, really fighting the whole way to the finish, so I'm super happy with that. Fantastic. Congratulations, Tove. Thank you. Well, there's stuff to unpick from that, isn't there, Leo? So she had a crash and twisted her bindings out of the way, which is why she was so far back at the start. And uh, Anna, Rod Anna Alonso lost the ski. Yeah, so um, it was the um, Alba de Silvestro, sorry, that told us that uh, it was quite a pity because uh, she wanted to have a battle with Anna Alonso at the end, but uh, Anna Alonso, unfortunately, was uh, lost in her ski. So, yeah, it was quite... Um, a pity for for them both because uh, I think it's better to have a, not a medal like finishing fourth but have a great battle than to to have the medal with uh, the, your adversary losing uh, having a material problem. Yes, absolutely. But also hearing from our champion there, Tove Alexanderson, that uh, she had a problem and thought that there were people in front of her, so she was pushing hard because she thought she still had races to catch. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, at the end, she said she was really, really tired also, and uh, the cold was quite a challenge because, uh, yeah, I was not expecting it, but I think the humidity and at the bottom of the race, like uh, in the transition zone we are se uh, seeing in the with the camera, I think it was quite complicated because when it's too humid, it's really hard to breathe properly. And uh, yeah, I think the cold and the humidity was quite a challenge for for the women and is still a challenge for the, the men that are still uh, doing the race. You mentioned conditions before when you were talking about skins. We're just watching uh, one of our Dutch athletes here and he's just tried two skins and they will not adhere to the bottom of his ski. He's going on to a third skin here to try and get this one to adhere at the, at the base. So is this the weather getting colder? Or what's what's causing the issue here, do you think? I think it's mainly due to the um, ah, that works. So the French snow, but also the, um, the humidity, because uh, if your skin is humid and then it freezes a bit in the downhill, it's really hard to have good skins that are that are not uh, that are sticking uh, at the, the start of the next uphill. This is not his favourite transition ever in sports. I think this one will go down as a must-do-better for him there. But he's off, he's away. And um, I was going to ask you about the technology of the skins because, again, some people may be listening to this who are new to the sport or haven't watched um, Schemo before and haven't actually had a chance to touch the skins. And they're effectively like bristles, aren't they, that are upside down and you have different ones for different conditions, slightly longer, slightly shorter, uh, but all of them, I'm guessing, need to be sticky on one side and stay that way throughout the putting on and the taking off of the skis. Yeah, for sure. So the, the, um, uh, yeah, the, the skin is, uh, is really important to put it in your uh, racing suit during the race at the, the top of the uphill, when you're putting uh, away the, the skins, you're putting, putting them in the, in the racing suit because it keeps the, the, um, the skins a bit, um, I would say, uh, with supple. the heat of the... Yeah, supple, and also it avoids to, the skins to, to become icy. So, uh, yeah, and also, uh, especially for the individual race, it's really important to have a, a, good, um, a good skin that is sticking well to the skis because 
in sprint you can have a, a, a skins that is uh, easier easier removable from your skis like with less um, I don't know how to say it but um, the the skins uh, less yeah, sticky. sorry I'm a bit lo yeah and well you are doing uh, this in your second language rather excellently so we'll yeah, let you off. yeah sorry yeah. <laughs> it's quite complicated for me um, <laughs> but yeah especially in an individual race I would say in a, to sum it up, you have to have uh, good skins that uh, stick a lot to the skis because uh, as you are doing multiple uh, uphills and downhills, you have to um, to avoid uh, your skins not to to stick anymore, which can be a, a, a great problem. Especially if you're losing a skin in the uphill, you have to stop in the fresh snow, uh, removing your ski, and uh, yeah, it takes a lot of time. So yeah. Important yeah, that causes all, all kind of problems. Skins. I'm guessing getting your bindings back on without snow under your boots and all other kinds of problems that you don't want to have. Um, do top this another question while we're talking about skins? Do top athletes use the same skins for for another race, or do you have fresh skins for different races, or how long does does a pair of skins last? It really depends between the athletes because. Um, yeah, uh, especially with the um, the companies. Also, there is some uh, different companies of that are making skins. So there is some differences between the companies, and also uh, the athletes are receiving, I think, like ten pairs of skins at the beginning of the season, even more sometimes. And uh, you have to test them and using them uh, during training a bit because if you're taking uh, full new skins, they are not gliding properly. So yeah, you have to to use them a bit in order to have uh, gliding skis, skins, sorry. And um, I think the skins can last for one season. They are for one season they are the, your racing skins, and uh, for the next season they are taking uh, the new ones and uh, yeah, changing it. And the old ones are becoming uh, training skins. Fantastic! Or we'll raffle them off for charity as well. Uh, Remy Bonnet's used skins i'm sure would uh, benefit some charity along the way because he is out in front it seems once again climbing towards the beautiful blue sky and the top of this crest again and there wasn't a huge difference between him and gachet at the end of that second split it was she said doing the maths very badly in her head around 16 seconds and we're seeing Gachet climbing behind him. We're going to have a great look at this transition zone again as Monet summits. And there's Anselmet, who is coming up in third place at the moment. And uh, we have the official results for the under 20 men category. So Jules Rebo is winning the race in front of Simone Campagnoni. Uh, Elliot Robin Sage, the French who arrived second on the finish line, had one minute penalty, so he dropped to the third place, but still a podium for him. Herman de Bertolis uh, comes fourth, and the fifth is Eduardo Mottini, two Italians uh, in fourth and fifth position. So, yeah, and three Italians in the top five, two French, and there is a lot of interest in winter sports in Italy with the Olympics in Milano Cortina coming up in 2026. And with the beautiful mountains that you have in Italy, the Dolomites, the Italian Alps, it's uh, a winter playground as we see Remy Bonnet come into transition. And it's the, the last uh, transition where he's putting away the, the skins. Then he will have the last transition where he's putting back the skins and then the last uphill up to the finish line. And uh, it's interesting because you can see that the gap uh, is, uh, is not that huge. So it will be interesting with the last downhill and also the last uphill. But uh, still, I think uh, he's in a good way to, to win this uh, European Championship. He's unconcerned. He wasn't even looking to see if anybody was close behind him. And this is Xavier Gachet in second position, also doing a great race. And uh, like uh, the last season, he was really strong in uh, January. And um, 
yeah, I think this year still. And uh, it's important also to say that uh, there isn't any individual race at the beginning of this season before this uh, European Championship. So it was quite challenging for the athletes because they didn't know at all their level compared to the other nations. And uh, yeah, I think it was uh, quite... Uh, quite a stress for the athlete because you were coming to the, the start and you don't know if you're going to be fifth or tenth. You never know exactly where you're going to finish, but uh, you can expect uh, a position. And uh, so this year, the, um, as the championship are really early in the season, it's it was quite a surprise for all the athletes. But at the end, uh, the best are in front and uh, there isn't any big surprise. But still, we need to... <laughs> to wait for the finish because up to the finish line it's not finished and uh, it can uh, everything can happen still well as we heard in the women's race a binding can get twisted the wrong way or a ski can be lost and in fourth i think it was um, it was nadir maguet here we can see maximilien drion that is just following um, uh, paul vermiak so he is nadir maguet the fourth Quite uh, unusual to see him in uh, in the first position of the Italians because the Italians are really strong in uh, individual races and so being the first Italian is already uh, quite a victory I would say. Fifth position is Aurelien Gay, so doing really a great race. Really happy for him because uh, he really deserves to do a good race. Really young athlete, athlete, sorry. But impressive. Yeah, really Up impressive. The transition. A little sneaky look to see where Gershé is. Yeah, so Rémi has quite a, a consequent gap, but uh, it's not sufficient to do the, the last uphill uh, easily. So we will have to push... Uh, up to the finish line because uh, Xavier can really make a good uh, last uh, uphill and so. And he begins the chase. So we are potentially looking at the gold and silver medalists on their way for the final climb. And we're expecting Thibaut Anselme to... It will be a nice gift for... Uh, for his children, the new ch newborn children. <laughs> newborn child, sorry, I'm using a bit oh, my language. Yeah. There he is. He's just skipped past into the transition area. Let's pivot all the way around. There he is. And um, if Thibaut Selmay is going to make the bronze medal, it will be its first uh, individual race medal in the championships because he has never done a medal in uh, individual in uh, European as well as the world championships. So yeah, really strong race also for him. The winner of last, uh, last year uh, of a World Cup after finishing two times uh, second. So one of the best uh, overall athletes of the um, of the Skimo family. And we will see him on Friday in the mixed relay, which he has medaled in. Yeah. As you mentioned there. And we... Keep and I think the, the surprise... Sorry. Oh, no, no, carry on. I think the surprise today is to see uh, Aurelien Gay in the top five and uh, also not seeing uh, other Italians because uh, they really, as I said before, they're really strong in the individual race. And uh, like uh, in sixth, Robert Antonioli, yeah, I, I would say <laughs> I would have expected uh, him a bit higher, maybe in front of Aurelien Gay, but uh, yeah, still a nice race. And uh, I'm really happy for Aurelien because he's doing really a, a great, great performance. Being top five in the European Championship is something incredible. 
There's quite some frosting on that face furniture there for um, Antonolo, Antonioli. That beard is gathering quite some ice. But I suspect but he... it's potentially keeping his face warm as well. Yeah. But as I said, uh, the Italians are, are not in front, but uh, they are 6th and 7th, which is really not a bad race. But uh, yeah, maybe they, in some races they, um, they are better. But today, with the, with the, the con conditions and also the, not the too technical downhill, I would say, it's uh, difficult for them to be uh, fighting for the podium. And Paul Verniak in ninth position, the first under-23 uh, man, Really doing a great race today, and uh, yeah, I don't know if he already went into the the top ten in individual races, but uh, I think it will be the best result for him. Oh no, last year in uh, Tromsø he went fifth during the individual race, so it will be his second best result, but still a great performance for him. And at and a uh, European Championship, so there's more prestige there as well. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, a, a huge surprise is to see uh, Matteo Edalin, the living legend of Skimo, who is, uh, yeah, he has won everything. Like he has won uh, fifth, uh, five times the Mezzalama, the Pieramenta. He's really uh, six times the Mezzalama and uh, five times the Pieramenta. So it's a living legend, but it's not uh, usual to see him in the being 11th only. And um, 13th is uh, Nils Oberhauer, who is the, the second um, under-23 athlete. Really nice race also for him. And uh, also, I think, in the, um, in the third place for the under-23 category is Thomas, Robin Bussard, sorry. So also doing a great race, being 15th. And uh, Trim Lodonen, 16th, is the, um, also uh, under 23 category. So, yeah, it will be really interesting to see also this uh, under 23 podium because it's really close. Here is the, the brother of Robin, it's Thomas. They are twins. And uh, yeah, the both will be in the top five uh, under 23 category. So, really nice race. And this is uh, Ludovic Lation, also. Uh, on the 23, Matteo Sostizzo also, Anselm Dambin. Yeah, you can see here that all the under 23 are packed for the top 20. So, yeah, really interesting to see it. This is good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was the people I was racing since uh, 2017, 17, sorry. So, yeah, I really know them well. You wish you were there and now, don't you? <laughs> yeah, but uh, life is life, you know. And still uh, under 23, like it's all under 23. Julian Tritcher, Luca Tomazzoni, Rémi Cantan, and uh, Werner Marti, as I said, the, the reigning uh, European champion. Um, which is... Uh, it's quite a bit more complicated for him this season, but uh, yeah. Well, it's good to see that we've got great racing in the under-23 category. It's uh, a little more cut and dried in the men's race after that transition. But as we say, there's, there's still plenty of metres to go. Remy Bonnet in front of Xavier Gachet and Thibaut Ansome. The top three. And it's also nice to see all these under 23 athletes in front uh, fighting for the top 20, sorry, because, uh, yeah, it's really the, the future of Skimo. And uh, I think it's quite the, the generation that will make it to the Olympics. And even if the individual race is not in the 2026 Olympics, maybe uh, it will be in the 2030. So, yeah, really cool to see all these uh, young athletes performing well today. We're heading towards the tail end of this race. And it's about the climbs at this stage. And 
just watching these final transitions. At the tail of the men, senior men and under 23 category. And uh, they're all heading towards the finish line. So they have to do only just the last uphill of 3,050 meters of the nivellation. And then we normally we will see uh, Remy Bonnet coming up to the finish line in some minutes now. Well, the conditions have stayed pretty consistent across the day. There's been a little bit of low cloud and fog in the valley in Flen. But as our ski mountaineers have made their way up the mountain, they've climbed into the sunshine through some beautiful snow and some glorious background. And you can understand why the downhillers like to come to this part of France. It's got a pretty safe snow record. It's got some of the best snow records in Europe. And quite often when there is snow lacking in other resorts, Flen is where the downhillers head. And there is plenty to offer the uphill skier as well. Day one of the European Championships. The individual races have been held in the under-18 women's, the under-18 men's, the under-20 under men's and women's. And we've had the finish in the women's senior and under-23 race. And we're just in the final stages of the senior men and under-23 competition now. As they make their final ascent to the peak. And maybe and we can talk line. about... Yeah, sorry, maybe we can talk about the under-23 women category, maybe. It's not official yes, result. Yes, just, just but... looking to break that one down. So, yes, let's do that. But uh, we can see here that um, Caroline Ulrich, who was in, in front at uh, some point of the under-23 uh, race, had to withdraw, so quite a pity for her. I don't know what happened, but also Perrine Gendre, had to do it. So yeah, two under 23 who are quite strong had to withdraw. I hope it's not uh, it's not uh, too um, too bad for her. And um, so for the podium, I think it's Margot Ravinel who is in first place in the under 23 category, followed by Lisa Moreschini. And in third place, I think it's uh, Noemi Juno. So another Italian. So yeah, really nice podium also. Yeah, 21 and, years uh, old, uh, Margot Ravenel of, of France and really declared herself at the 2020 Winter Youth Olympic Games and showed that she is one of the rising stars in the sport. Uh, three medals I think she picked up then. And that is certainly not going to be the last we see from her. And Lisa... Maraschini, uh, she's, it's just part of the family schemo for her. Everybody was into schemo. They signed her up for her first race, which had been organised by her uncles, and she won it. Um, she says the struggle of the climb uh, it adds to the joy of the descent, but she loves all of it, and she loves the fact that it's a sustainable sport. It doesn't need any infrastructure for you to slap on your skis and your skins and climb to the summits. Just 22 years old and... A wise head on her shoulder by the sound of it. We're crossing back now to the ascent for the senior men. And that bank of cloud that's just been sitting in the valley all day, providing the backdrop as we wait to see who is going to be up first. I think that looks to me like Remy Bonnet in the distance. Just get the camera nicely positioned there, and that is definitely a red suit. Yeah, Remy Bonnet coming up to the finish line. Just marching up the hill as if it's nothing. 
as if he's got crampons and every manner of grip and not just a pair of very lightweight skis and skins and a couple of poles. And he's also the, the biggest favourite for the vertical race, uh, the next race of the European Championship. So, yeah, for sure he has uh, started well the championship and uh, he really wants to have another gold medal on, uh, fri on uh, Wednesday. Rest day tomorrow and the action resumes on Wednesday. Sprint on Thursday and then in Chamonix on Friday we have the mixed relay. And I think also Remy is taking part into the, the mixed relay for the for Switzerland. So yeah, really interesting to see him in this discipline because he has never done uh, any mixed relay and uh, it will be really nice to see him uh, battling for the for the podium. And this is the uh, the kind of joy of the Olympics that it has actually created this mixed relay um, interest, which is it's you can't compete in the relay unless you completed in the sprints at the Olympics. No individual race for 2026 as yet, but yep, we will see Remy Bonnet with Marianne Faton in the mixed relay. That will be the team that I have in front of me at the moment, subject to confirmation. Paul Vermanac is uh, going to be competing with Johanna Heimer, Heimer. And he is another one of the under-23s that has been performing very well today. But victory very close now for Remy Bonnet. And this is Xavier Gachet, the second of the race, going for the silver medal. Being watched by those in the gondola going up, taking the easy route to the top. But what you don't earn definitely feels less satisfying. Remy uh, running up the hill as he's really a strong runner also in the summer, so nothing hard for him here. It's impressive. At the end of the race, he finds a sprint. And he's just got to take that final corner. He was already a world champion in the individual race in 2015 in the under 20 category. So, yeah, really experienced uh, racer and uh, really nice race for him today. But I think he had really to be strong because uh, Xavier Gachet isn't that far, far behind him. So, yeah. He's Maybe, just uh, checking. The man with the number one on his bib is number one in the European Championships. Remy Bonnet of Switzerland has taken the gold medal and he has dominated this race. As he casts a look over his shoulder, just, just see how far back Xavier Gachet is. The Frenchman was pushing hard for so much of the race, but it's the Swiss number one who takes the gold, Gachet. He finds a little sprint up the final hill and makes the final turn towards the finishing line. A silver medal for Xavier Gachet in France. He's one minute, 0 0.396 seconds behind Bonnet. And really great race for, um, for Xavier because he hasn't done any medals into the individual for the championships. Two years ago, he was fourth in the European Championship and uh, last year he was eighth. So best performance for him in the individual race for championship. Congrats to him.
And here is the bronze medalist, Thibaut Anselme. Well, the podium was decided relatively early on. There was a potential for a couple of changes. Anselme just checking there's nobody creeping up behind him. But the bronze medal will be his. And has... Um... As we saw with uh, Xavier Gachet, uh, Thibaut Anselme never had a medal in the championships in individual races. So really great also for him because first time on the podium. Congrats also to him. Right, have a little bit of a celebration before preparing for the vertical race on Wednesday. And here it comes. Thibaut Anselme and his teammate Xavier Garchet waiting to welcome him over the line. And that is race done for the Frenchman. Great sporting yeah, great. spirit among these men. Great day for France also. And we can say uh, Aurélien Gay, fourth, really impressive. It's hard not to be emotional now, but uh, yeah, congrats to him because uh, I'm so happy for him. What a great finish. He really did look at him and the emotion coming out there from him as well. So close to a bronze medal, potentially closing right down on Thibaut Anselme, who we saw glancing behind him. And perhaps we didn't realize quite how close Gay was. Yeah, really happy for him. It's really an incredible race. I think it's one of the best races uh, within the top five today because his best result in, um, in the individual races last year was, uh, I think it was a, a top 10. So, yeah, really impressive and uh, really happy for him. Fifth is uh, Nadir Maguet, also a strong performance, finishing first Italian. Quite unusual to see uh, the first Italian in, in fifth place, but uh, yeah, it is what it is for Italy today. Definitely Sixth, need to have Robert a... Antonioli. Definitely need that celebratory photo there. For William Gay. He is delighted. The fatigue goes when you've achieved something that you can call a personal best. Fourth place at the European Championships. Boscacci feeling the pain as he comes over the line. In seventh place. And now we're waiting for the first uh, under 23 man. I think it will be uh, Paul Verniak, the Austrian. And uh, we're seeing that uh, it's like. Daniel Ganal, I think, who is coming to the line in eighth position. Here it is. Really nice race also for him. And then in ninth place, um, it is the first under 23 category man, Paul Verniak. Really great race also for him. Impressive today and uh, well deserved the uh, gold medal. Big hug from his teammates, a statuesque Austrian. Tenth is coming uh, Maximilien Drion. Great race also for him. I think he was expecting a bit more as usual. But uh, yeah, great race also and uh, he can be satisfied with his performance. That's Paul Verniak. One of the under 23 European Championship. We'll get all these results confirmed. But that is our provisional gold medalist in the under 23 category. Yeah, really nice to see uh, two Austrian in the top 10. Quite uh, unusual. So, yeah, Austria today has been also a great day of racing. And uh, 11th is Samuel Eki. And the 12th is uh, Matteo Edalin. And 13th is uh, Nils Oberauer. Really great race for him because uh, second under 23, so oh, double medal that. for Austria. Really impressive. I wasn't expecting him at this level, but uh, yeah. Well done. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, they have to say Mr. Oberar looks like he wants to cry. And third fantastic. For the under, yeah, fantastic. And for the third place is uh, Romain Bussard in the under-23 category. Really a great race also for him. I think he can really be happy about his performance. And uh, yeah, today was, is a great day for France, uh, Switzerland and uh, also um, Austria. And I think uh, it's quite a surprise to see the, the Italians not that good today, but uh, yeah. Well, we saw Italian success elsewhere in the women's yeah, race. Sure. So let's uh, yeah. give you a quick round up of the other results today while we wait for confirmation of this senior and under 23 men's race. In the women's under 18, Laia Celes Sanchez took the gold medal ahead of Melissa Bertolina of Italy with Martina Scola taking the bronze in the men's under 18. The medals going again to Italy. Luca Curioni in the gold medal position. Enrico Pellegrini taking silver with Anna Mossa of Switzerland in bronze. In the women's under 20, Ida Valdal survived a one minute penalty to take gold by 1.6 seconds ahead of Louise Trancas of France. Lea Ancien Ave of Andorra was in the bronze medal position. And in the men's under 20, Jules Rebo took gold ahead of Italy's Simon Campagnoli. And Elliot Robin Sage of France making it a France 1 3 on the podium. He did pick up a one minute penalty, but still managed to finish in the bronze medal position. In the women's senior race, it was victory for Tove Alexanderson, comprehensively, 2 minutes and 37.32 seconds ahead of Celia Perla Pesse of France, Alba Di Salvestro of Italy taking the bronze medal. And we're hearing that, uh, we're hearing that Ana Alonso Rodriguez had problems with her ski, lost a ski on the final climb, so she missed out in fourth place. We saw the under-23 gold medal go to Margot Ravenel. And in the men's senior race, and we're waiting for confirmation of these to come through, Remy Bonnet has taken gold ahead of Xavier Gachet, Thibaut Ansolme getting the, the bronze medal for France. And the men's the under-23s being won by Paul Verbenac. So we will get those confirmed. Leo, it's been a great day of ski mountaineering yeah for sure it was really nice the track was uh, as uh, we expecting for uh, an individual race technical but also fast and uh, interesting the weather conditions were really great also i think maybe a bit uh, too humid for the athletes but uh, i think uh, we saw way worse in the world cup and uh, yeah Really great day. Also great uh, performances from the, the young athletes. The, they gave everything up to the line and it's really nice to see all these uh, youngsters uh, willing to do uh, great races and also uh, continue Eximo for the future. How important is it to get the experience of performing in big competitions like this at such a young age? Uh, yeah, you have the the, conf the direct confrontations with the other nations, and uh, it's what uh, it's uh, expecting you in the World Cup uh, circuit when you are in senior. So yeah, it's already uh, knowing how to fight with other nations, being a lot at the start, uh, doing great transitions in order to be in good position in the downhills, and uh, yeah, it's quite a good uh, school for for the youngs because you were learning a lot about skimo also how to to manage a longer track eating drinking during the race it's quite important and uh, we can see that uh, Paul Verniak is winning the under 23 category but he was already on the podium uh, in the under 20 category as well he was winning all the world cups nearly so yeah, I think to perform in the senior category, you have to have quite a bit of experience and uh, doing these championships is uh, really a great way to, to learn uh, the sport. 
And who do you think has impressed you most across the day, male or female? I mean, Tova Anders Alex Anderson just absolutely smashed it. She thought that she, well, she had a fall on her first descent and says that she knocked her binding out of whack and she had to straighten that up. We saw after the first split that she was quite some distance behind. But then as she battled her way back into the race, she also told us that she thought there were more people in front of her, so she was pushing really hard. And it was a surprise to her that she'd actually taken the gold medal. Yeah, for sure. I think it's one of the performance of the day. Also um, in the on the 18 category, with the podium um, of uh, no sorry on the 20 category of women with uh, Ida Waldal winning just by one second because she had a penalty. I think it's quite uh, also a great performance because winning by one minute is really impressive. And uh, for sure, also the performance of my friend Aurélien Gué. He's, Absolutely. Uh, in fourth place, I think it's quite of the best performance of the day because uh, yeah, he's really young and uh, being in the top uh, five, even the top four, it's really, really an impressive race. Yeah. And Rémi Bonnet, of course, has done a, a great race today with uh, the two French following him. Yeah, I think it was really a great day and uh, I just hope that um, Caroline Ulrich and Perrin Gendre, who had to withdraw from the race, are not in a bad uh, shape. And uh, it was just, uh, I think, material problem or something like this, but not something too bad for, for them both. Well, we'll probably have information will come up on the social media feeds about that. Uh, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to hear from our senior men uh, race winners, potentially, with an interview or two. But um, we're just seeing those empty gondolas heading down the slopes and because we've had the schemo, they're empty coming up as well. But it's been a really great advert for the sport as well for those who haven't haven't watched it before and didn't actually understand what uphill skiing is. It's been a great example of <laughs> the kind of mindset and the kind of training you need to be at the top of your game for something like this. Remy Volley, congratulations, a fantastic gold medals in this opening day of the European Championships here in France. Everything went well for you from the beginning. Yeah, I think the shape is really good and uh, the goal was clear for me this year, like was to to be European champion. So like one thing is uh, done now and uh, now I am on uh, the vertical and the relay. So let's hope for the same. So you will have free, two free days and then you will concentrate on Thursday and Friday to finish uh, in the best way these European championships. Yeah, yeah, this afternoon we will relax in the spa, the hotel and then we will uh, focus again for the vertical. Fantastic. Thank you very much and congrats. Thank you. And the vertical will be on Wednesday. And it's a rest day tomorrow. Let's hear from Thibaut Anselme. Thibaut Anselme, second, third, third place. Thibaut Anselme, bronze medal, third place. It was a tough race. You had a fight, uh, inside fight with your teammate uh, uh, Xavier Gachet. How it was your race? Yeah, it was a, a good race. Uh, yeah, third place. I'm very happy about that. It was hard for me in downhill. I, it's difficult to take a risk today in, uh, in downhill, so I managed to, to be sure. And, and after in, in uphill, I, I, uh, I was in good shape and uh, it's okay to to have this third place and uh, happy uh, very happy also for Xavier with the second place and uh, congrats to, to to Remy for for the for the win so good uh, a good start for these european champions congrats yeah thanks it's a good start we will see uh, the next race thank you very much thanks okay. Just finding Xavier Gershé so we can hear from the silver medalist and complete our set of gold, bronze and silver. Xavier Gershé is rehydrating, I think, and just uh, getting himself ready to face the cameras and uh, then we'll, we'll kind of pick apart what Thibault was saying to us there. Did he say that he was, he was managing the downhill because he was worried about his wrist, Leo? Or was it risk? No, no, it was risk, but uh, yeah, he's uh, good. Uh, he's really good in downhill, but I think today it was quite uh, 
dangerous to take uh, too much risk because you could really fall hard and uh, broke some material. So I think it was saying that that uh, you really needed to be cautious in the downhill in order not to break any boots or skis or even bindings. Yeah, we saw that with the under-18 men when they started the race. The, the downhill was, was a bit harem scarum. Let's hear from our silver medalist, Zave Gachet. I think he's going to do the interview in French, maybe, because... Oh, that's great. You can translate that, for us. That they are, that they are talking about this. Sometimes it's, it's really unfair to expect people to uh, suddenly jump into a language you're less familiar with. We are here with the uh, silver medalist, the second place uh, for the French team uh, with uh, Xavier Gachet. It was an inside fight with your teammate, with Thibaut Anselme. And so you confirmed a very good shape in this beginning of the season. Yes, uh, Thibaut uh, is a very strong uh, this year, uh, like uh, Remy. So uh, it's a good race. It's my first uh, medal uh, in uh, European Championships. So it is good, it is at home with your family and your supporters. Yes, but uh, my home is Arèche. <laughs> at home in France, generally speaking. Yes, yes. Congratulations. I think in general he doesn't like doing interviews because his English is excellent in very much the same way that uh, a lot of people who speak English say I don't speak it very well. But it's always better than the way that us English don't speak foreign languages particularly well. Leo, um, it, it has been a, a great race for those, those three um, competitors and we did see difficult conditions to start with which perhaps urge caution for those running later in the day yeah for sure it was a it was a really good day today and uh, it was really nice to see all the athletes uh, doing well today so that is it for the end of day one um, Leo I'm looking forward to joining you for the mixed relay on Friday which will be coming from Chamonix and that will be the final event of this European Championships. Thank you for all your hard work today. Thank you. It was really a pleasure and uh, sorry for my English. I'm trying Do not apologize for your English. I'm going to switch your microphone off now because it's excellent. Uh, we'll just recap the results then from the race. In the men's under-18 individual race, Luca Curioni of Italy was the gold medalist there and a great performance by the Italian who... Uh, was, was he was outstanding he, he actually took that away and we mentioned the beginning of that under 18s race um, with the very fresh powder around catching people out the under 20 women's Ida Valdal well she <coughs> picked up a time penalty but still managed to finish in the gold medal position ahead of Louise Trancaz of France with the Andorran coming home in the bronze medal position in the women's under 20 European Championship Individual race, Laia Celes Sanchez of Spain won the under-18 category ahead of Melissa Bettoloni and Martina Scola of Italy filling the podium. The under-20 men's was won by Jules Rebaud of France ahead of Simone Campagnoni and Elliot Robinsage of France taking the bronze medal position. Yeah, he had a time penalty also, but uh, he finished second on the finish line, but at the end he was uh, still third, so great performance. And here are the results for the senior women. Tove Alexanderson running away with it ahead of Sela Peri La Pesse. Uh, Alba Di Silvestro of Italy in bronze medal position there. Anna Alonso Rodriguez with problems, but uh, another great race. And I uh, forgot to mention the performance also of uh, Margot Ravinel, sixth in the. Uh, senior women category so really impressive for her because she was uh, she has done really a great race being in the top six is really impressive yeah superb absolutely superb and the top under 23 as you say Remy Bonnet the gold medalist at the European Championships in the individual race ahead of Xavier Garchet and Thibaut Ensemble getting the bronze 
in the ISMF 2024 European Championships individual race. That is day one done and dusted. The vertical race will take place on Wednesday, the sprint on Thursday. On Friday, we head to Chamonix to bring you full coverage of the mixed relay. But for now, why not enjoy some of the results of the day? And thank you for joining us. avec les jeux et